Okay, I'm a minute early. Well, I'm a, well I was a minute early. What a day, what a day. Hi, Margo. Hi, special needs mom. Hi, Al. Everybody, make sure you're in live chat and we'll get started in a second. Um, then I put on a cup of coffee. I've just been, it's freezing. I don't know, it's absolutely freezing. Went to a sports awards dinner for the, din not dinner, why do I say dinner all the time? Present, uh, what was it, award ceremony. And it was so cold. I was freezing the entire time there. I had the heat blaring back all over. Hello from wife, Margo Glenn Jarman. Special needs, Janae. So today we're going to talk about some more details in the school shooting. We're going to talk about one of the nine-year-olds um, trying to summon for help before she was shot to death. And we're going to talk about Brian Kohlberger and threats he got from an inmate. And then we're going to talk about an Australian case where the wife poisoned her husband's favorite lemon cookies and then stuffed him in a freezer. And of course, any other headlines that we find. Um, I'm just thinking if I want to get a drink first. Hi, Barb Olson. All right, let's get let's get started. So, first, let's um, we also have some other big news about Adnan Saeed. Wow, Maryland court reinstates his murder conviction. What? How? Wait a minute. I am so confused. I thought that time passed that they had to say, well, this is weird. Okay, let's take a look at this first. Now, if you don't know the case of Adn Adnan Saeed, we had went over it again in here, but it was the subject of, I think, the, the first true crime uh, podcast called Serial. Hold on, I'm just turning on my blood heater here because I'm cold again. Hang on. So if you didn't, I mean, the serial podcast, like, gripped from the beginning, but then on the last episode, she really didn't, she wasn't able to sum it up very good, and even um, Saturday Night Live made a parody of it. So then, when was it that he was released, and it was overturned, and they had to decide whether to pursue it? And I thought he was done. So it says now the appellate court of Maryland on Tuesday reinstated the convictions of Adnan Saeed. And as we were going over this stuff, there was like another character in this um, saga that we were reading about that definitely looked like he had some involvement in this. But anyway, it says the appellate court of Maryland on Tuesday reinstated the convictions of Adnan Saeed for the 1999 murder of Hyman Lee. Agreeing with Young Lee that prosecutors and the presiding judge who vacated the conviction didn't give him enough time to attend the hearing in person. And that was her brother. Baltimore Circuit Judge Melissa Finn vacated Saeed's 2000 conviction in September after prosecutors and Saeed's attorneys revealed other possible suspects in Lee's strangling death and some crucial evidence was deemed unreliable. Young Lee said he intended to appeal the ruling, while the Baltimore State's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, dismissed the charges. Appellate court judges Gregory Wells and Catherine G. Graff, however, found merit in Lee's appeal and reinstated the conviction and the charges. They did not, however 
allow, agree to allow Lee to present her challenge evidence at a new hearing. What? Saeed's case, the murder of Haley, Heyman Lee, was the subject of the first season of the True Crime Podcast serial hosted by journalist Sarah Koning. It first aired in 2014 and has been downloaded more than 80 million times by 2016. Lee, an 18-year-old student at Baltimore's Woodlawn High School, was Saeed's ex-girlfriend. She was last seen January 13, 1999 and found dead on February 9th in Leakin Park. An anonymous phone on February 12th suggested Saeed, then 17, might be a suspect, and he was arrested and charged with first-degree murder two weeks later. His first trial ended in a mistrial, and he was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison at his second trial. Saeed's attorney, Erica Suter, said she plans to appeal the court ruling to Maryland Supreme Court. There is no basis for re-traumatizing Adnan by returning him to the status of a convicted felon. For the time being, Adnan remains a free man. The appellate court judges set a 60-day window for their ruling to take effect, meaning Saeed will not immediately return to prison. Judge Stuart R. Berger dissented from the majority ruling by Wells and Graff. He argued that the rights of victims in this case, Hyman Lee's brother, was a policy matter that should be decided by legislatures and not legislators and not a court. Saeed will return to court with the same judge who presided over the hearing that set him free last year. If his attorney does not appeal the ruling, or if she does, and the Supreme Court rules against him, it will be handled by a new state's attorney, Ivan Bates, who took office in January. He said during his election campaign that he agreed. Saeed's conviction was flawed. Hmm, that's crazy. Okay. I don't know. So let's talk about what the Nashville school shooter said to an Instagram friend. She said that she felt, I just need to die minutes before the shooting began. So let's just look at this. Okay, so. And this person that she texted this to was a former middle school basketball teammate. She looked at her phone at 9.57 a.m. And she saw a message from the person that shot up six people, killed six people at the Covenant School in Nashville. Avariana Patton said she saw the message that Hale planned to die by suicide and that Patton would see it on the news. In the messages Patton gave to the news, Hale told Patton she would see her again in another life. She told Patton about no longer wanting to live and the need to die. One day this will make more sense, she wrote. I've left behind more than enough evidence, but something bad is about to happen. She said, let's see here. 
957. Here, let me put this up here if I can. So basically that post I made on here about you that was basically a suicide note. I'm planning to die today. This is not a joke. You'll probably hear about me on the news after I die. This is my last goodbye. I love you. See you again in another life. Audrey, parentheses, Aiden. She says, Audrey, you have so much more life to live. I pray God keeps you, keeps and covers you. She says, I know, but I don't want to live. I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to upset you or get attention. I just need to die. Patton says she still can't believe that she was one of the last people to have some contact with Hale before the shooting. The two played basketball together at IT Cresswell Middle School years ago. I'm trying to wrap my mind around it all now. I'm involved. How? I'm sent the message. I get a lot of questions and I've got a lot of questions and I'm giving them to God. Hale was right. Patton found out later on the news. I had no clue it was her. I had, we knew it was a shooting, but I didn't know that the message was tied to the actual physical what happened tragedy, said Patton. It's something she's still trying to wrap her mind around, knowing she did all she could to help. Spiritually, it's eating me. It's eating me alive right now because I'm trying to make God help me wrap my mind around what, what is this, God? She said that she just hopes this is a warning to others. My message to you guys would be to say something. I don't care how minimal or how big or how you personally feel about it. If you have something of someone saying, I need help, I'm about to harm myself, say something. I tried to comfort and encourage her and subsequently reached out to the suicide prevention helpline after being instructed to by my father at 10.08 a.m. Audrey has shared with others that she has been suicidal in the past and I knew to take this serious. Here's another... I wanted to tell you first because you are the most beautiful person I've ever seen and known in my life. My family doesn't know what I'm about to do. One day this will make more sense. I've left more than enough evidence behind, but something bad is about to happen. Patton said she called the Nashville Davidson County Sheriff's Office to make them aware of the situation and was instructed to call the Nashville non-emergency number. By then, MNPD said it was too late. After phone calls from friends and Audrey's name was released as the shooter at the Covenant Nashville School, I learned that Audrey was the shooter and that she had reached out to me prior to the shooting. My heart is with all the families affected and I'm devastated by what happened. What has happened? Okay, and here's something else about her. She was under care, Hale was, the shooter, for an emotional disorder and had legally bought seven firearms that were hidden at her home. That's according to the Metro Nashville Police Chief John Drake. The parents of the shooter spoke to police and said they knew Hale had bought and sold one weapon and believed that was the extent of it. Her parents felt that 
she should not own weapons. On Monday morning, Hale left home with a red bag and her parents asked what was inside, but were dismissed. Three of the weapons were used in the attack Monday. The seven weapons were purchased between October 20th of 2020 and June 6th of 2022. Police also said on Tuesday they did not know a motive. The shooter targeted the school and church in the attack, but did not specifically target any of the six people killed. Hale's writings mentioned a mall near the school as another possible target. All of Tennessee was hurt yesterday, said Tennessee Governor Bill Lee in a video statement Tuesday. The governor said his wife, Maria Lee, was best friends with one of the victims. Peak, who was supposed to come over to the Lee's home for dinner Monday evening. We can all agree on one thing, that every human life has great value. We will act to prevent this from happening again. There is a clear desire in all of us whether we agree on the action steps or not, that we must work to find ways to protect against evil. Over the course of today, details of the heinous attack came into view as police released body cam footage of the fatal shooting of the attacker. Her childhood friend revealed the shooter's disturbing messages and those who knew the victims reflected on their lost loved ones Earlier Tuesday, police released body camera footage from two officers who rushed into the school and fatally shot the mass shooter. The footage is from body-worn cameras of officers Rex Engelbert and Michael Colazzo, who police said fatally shot the attacker on Monday at 10.27 a.m. That video begins with Engelbert arriving at the school to find a woman outside who says the school is on lockdown but that there are two children unaccounted for. Another school official is seen handing the officer a key to open a door into the building and a group of five officers enter the school amid wailing fire alarms and immediately go into several empty classrooms to look for the suspect. They heard gunfire on the second floor, so hustled up the stairs as the bangs grew louder the officers approached the sound of gunfire and Engelbert arrived with an assault style arm, excuse me, armed with an assault style rifle, rounded a corner and fired multiple times at a person near a large window who dropped to the ground. Colazzo then pushed forward and appeared to shoot the person on the ground four times with a handgun yelling, stop moving. The officers finally approached the person moved a gun away and radioed suspect down suspect down the video adds further insight into the timeline of the shooting and the police response the first 911 call about the shooting came in at 10:13 a.m. and the shooter was killed 14 minutes later the police body camera footage of Engelbert entering the school and shooting the attacker lasts about 3 to 4 minutes the Covenant Christian School is a school educating about 200 students from pre-K through sixth grade. The school is a ministry of Covenant Presbyterian Church. The Nashville Mayor John Cooper said that the swift police response prevented further disaster and I quote, he said, it could have been worse without this great response. This was very well planned and numerous sites were investigated. The police chief similarly praised the response as swift. I was hoping this day would never ever come here in this city, but we will never wait to make entry and to go in and to stop a threat, especially when it deals with our children. Police say the shooting was targeted. It was closely planned and it was outlined in documents that were retrieved from the shooter's residence. Hale left writings pertaining to the shooting and had scouted a second possible attack location in Nashville.
but because of a threat assessment by the suspect that there was too much security, decided not to do that. She left behind a drawn out map of the school detailing how this was all going to take place. The writings revealed the attack at the Christian school was calculated and planned. The shooter was someone that had multiple rounds of ammunition prepared for confrontation with law enforcement, prepared to do more harm than was actually done. Three weapons, an AR-15, a Caltech sub-2000, and a handgun were found at the school. A search warrant executed at Hale's home led to the seizure of a sawed-off shotgun, a second shotgun, and other evidence. They found a lot of documents. This was clearly planned. Where'd she get the sawed off shotgun for? Because that wasn't legally purchased. You can't legally sell a sawed off shotgun. So where'd she get that from? They said all of her guns were legally purchased. Mayor Cooper said there was a lot of ammunition. There were guns. Police have referred to Hale as a female shooter and at an evening news conference added Hale was transgender. Hale used male pronouns on a social media profile. Hale graduated from Nasi Art College of Art and Design in Nashville last year. The president of that school confirmed. She worked as a freelance graphic designer and a part-time grocery shopper, according to a LinkedIn profile. And then they speak about Avariana Patton, who got those messages moments before the spree happened. And here's a still of um, her walking through the hallways. And that was. the moment she arrived. Armed with three firearms, she got into the school by firing through the glass doors, climbing through to get inside. Pointing an assault style weapon, the shooter walked through the school hallways. As the first five officers arrived, they heard gunfire from the second floor. The shooter was firing through a window at arriving police cars. Police went upstairs where two officers opened fire, killing her at 10.27 a.m. After the shooter was killed, children were evacuated from the school and taken in buses to be reunited with their families. They held hands and walked out in a line where community members embraced them. The school prepared for this with an active shooter training for a reason. Nashville Metropolitan Councilman Russ Pulley said, we don't like to think that this is ever going to happen to us, but experience has taught us that we need to be prepared because in this day and time, it is the reality of where we are. Patton, meanwhile, had called Nashville's non-emergency line at 10.14 a.m. and was on hold for nearly seven minutes before speaking with someone who said they would send an officer to my home. An officer did not come to her home until 3.30 p.m. Catherine Kuntz, the head of school, was one of the victims. She attended Vanderbilt University and Trevecca and Nazarene University in Nashville and got her master's degree from Georgia State University. Sissy Goff, one of Kuntz's friends, went to the reunification center after the shooting and suspected something was wrong when she didn't see Kuntz there. Knowing her, she's so kind and strong and such a voice of reason and just security for people that she would have been there in front handling everything. So I had a feeling. She said Kuntz was a calming influence and even got a dog named Covey, who greeted students before and after school. Parents are so anxious, kids are so anxious, and Catherine had such a centering voice for people. Mike Hill was identified in the staff section of the Covenant Presbyterian Church's website as faculty and kitchen staff. 
He was a custodian at the school per police, and a friend confirmed his image. Hill was the father of seven children and had 14 grandchildren. His family said in a statement, he loved to cook and spend time with his family. We would like to thank the Nashville community for all the continued thoughts and prayers as we grieve and try to grasp any sense of understanding of why this happened, and we continue to ask for support. His daughter, Brittany Hill, said in a Facebook post on Monday that her dad absolutely loved his job. And I quote, I have watched school shootings happen over the years and never thought I would lose a loved one over a person trying to solve a temporary problem with a permanent solution. I am so sorry for the loss of those children. Cynthia Peak, 61, was believed to be a substitute teacher. The family of Evelyn Diakos, one of the nine-year-old victims, gave a statement saying, I quote, our hearts are completely broken. We cannot believe this has happened. Evelyn was a shining light in this world. We appreciate all the love and support, but ask for space as we grieve. Now, Evelyn also did something I'm just going to get her picture up there. She's being called a hero after losing her life in the mass shooting. Evelyn was fatally shot on Monday while desperately trying to pull the fire alarm at the school a little after 10 a.m. Police say the shooter Audrey Hale brought three guns and significant ammunition into the school after breaking through a side door. And this little nine-year-old was desperately trying to pull the fire alarm. And these are the other two nine-year-old victims. Haley Scruggs and William Kinney. Along with Substitute teacher Cynthia Peak. Catherine Koontz and Mike Hill. Kohlberger. So it's these threats that Brian Koberger is getting uh, are coming from a new inmate who was brought into the Latta County Jail. He spent the entire night threatening to kill Brian Koberger. Now, Koberger is kept isolated from other inmates in the tiny jail in Moscow, Idaho, but the lockup size mean that he can hear these threats. So an anonymous source with intimate knowledge of Koberger's time in jail, that source said that at one point the inmate changed tactics and yelled that he would have Koberger kill the guards. The inmate was ultimately moved, although it's unclear where. Now, a former FBI agent said that Koberger's being kept isolated from other inmates because it's because of the danger to him is too great to 
put him in the population. Unidentified former inmates and jail sources said that Kohlberger spends his time flipping through television channels looking for reports about himself. News Nation reported that Kohlberger's two sisters have lost their jobs because of their connection with their brother. They did not cite a source for that, but said that the family is in dire financial straits since his parents are retired. None of the family has visited him in jail. Pennsylvania is an at-will state, meaning that employees can be fired for any reason, but one of his sisters worked in New Jersey. So that's strange. Let's see something. Melissa and Amanda Koberger were fired in the months after their brother's arrest. Both of Koberger's parents are retired. I'm told the family is in very, very bad shape financially right now because both sisters are unemployed. That was said by Brian Enton. Amanda was working as an actress. She had starred in a gory, low-budget 2011 horror movie two days back where her character was brutally stabbed, slashed, and hacked to death with knives and hatchets. Koberger was given a television inside his private cell and has the freedom to choose what he watches. He spends his days obsessively watching news coverage of himself, and that's revealed by a fellow inmate. Now, the, the one sister was a counselor in New Jersey, and the other sister, yes, she had been an actress, but she was, I believe, working as a school counselor in Pennsylvania. So I don't know how true that is there, um, but it could be that they had to just leave their jobs because they're, I don't know, I don't know. But we've got a story from Australia now about Rebecca Payne. So this is in the sleepy regional town of Victoria in Australia. A stay-at-home mom was found guilty of drugging and killing her husband by lacing his favorite lemon cookies with sleeping pills. The outback town of Walpiup in northwestern Aus Victoria, Australia was torn in half after 68-year-old Noel Payne was killed inside his home by his wife, Rebecca Payne, in 2020. Noel's daughter said she was absolutely devastated. The Paynes appeared to be a normal country family from the outside. But those closest to them say their marriage was far from happy. Noel first met Rebecca when she lived next to his daughter, Tracy, in Gorokan, New South Wales. Tracy said she thought Rebecca was bad news and she never wanted a romance to blossom between her and her and her father. She said her neighbor and her father hit it off and they quickly married before setting up a new life together in Victoria where they shared wholesome holidays with friends. But the neighbors said the relationship was marred with violence and allegations that Noel beat his wife. 
family friend, Barry, said that he saw bruises on her arms and chest too. I believe he used to punch her, Barry said. In court, prosecutors alleged that Rebecca wanted to get out of her marriage, that she was upset about another woman that Noel had been living, that had living in their home with them, and had also had enough of being beaten. The court heard that Rebecca had dreamt of drugging her husband for months, and while testifying, she told the jury she had expected him to just feel sleepy and go to bed. So one night she enacted her plan. Barry said Rebecca was a good cook and Noel liked her cookies. They always had cookies and cakes. On September 1st, 2020, Rebecca baked a big batch of lemon cookies and she crushed up some tamazepam pills with a mortar and a pestle. She used the powder to lace the icing of one cookie and set it aside for Noel, who she served to, which she served to him that night with a cup of Milo. He never woke up from that. Rebecca admitted that when she found her husband with no pulse, she didn't try to resuscitate him and she didn't call for an ambulance. She claimed she panicked and quickly wrapped his body in a blanket before tying each end with duct tape and dumping him in a chest freezer and strapping the freezer door closed. A few days later, Rebecca dragged the freezer to a neighbor's backyard. Shortly after a resident wrenched the lid open, they called the police and Rebecca was arrested. She admitted manslaughter and claimed she didn't mean to kill him, but the jury didn't believe her and she was found guilty of murder. The medical examination of her husband's body couldn't determine whether he died by drug overdose or suffocation. And they have questioned whether his daughter has questioned whether her dad was still alive when he was put into the freezer. Did he wake up? Was he trying to get out? His daughter now has nightmares about what happened and says she's been left with nothing but his ashes. She robbed me of my father and not being able to say goodbye to him. And so she was found guilty, but we don't know her sentence yet. And the sentences in Australia, from what I've heard, are not harsh. Maybe like 12 years. Crazy. Now we've got, if, um, be careful if you're going to an Airbnb or something like that, especially if there are mountain lions around, because whoopsie, what happened? Hold on. I know where it took my picture. All right, we'll put it over here. Get over there now. Stay there. A mountain lion clawed at a man's head as he and his wife were relaxing in a hot tub on a Colorado rental property this month. The victim was lounging in the hot tub when the mountain lion attacked in a heavily wooded area along the Chalk Creek in Chaffee County. Oh, Chaffee County, that's where, uh, what's his name? Um, Morphew, Barry Morphew. Around 8 p.m. on March 18th, Colorado Parks and Wildlife said in a news release, the man told authorities he felt something grab his wife before the terrified couple splashed water and screamed at the animal. The wife then grabbed a flashlight and pointed it towards the mountain lion. The husband and wife kept shouting at the mountain lion and it eventually retreated to the top of a hill where it crouched down and watched 
as the couple scurried back into the rental house. Oh my gosh. The husband has four superficial scratches on the top of his head and near his right eye. Officials, I mean, officers who inspected the wound say it matched the claw of a mountain lion. The pair called the rental home's owner, who happens to be a Colorado Parks and Wildlife officer, who then contacted the agency. While the injuries were minor and didn't require medical care, Sam Shepard, an area wildlife manager, said the agency takes the incident seriously. We think it's likely the mountain lion saw the man's head move in the darkness at ground level, but didn't recognize the people in the hot tub. The couple did the right thing by making noise and shining a light on the mountain lion. They added that the agency has alerted neighbors and posted signage to warn of the mountain lion activity. After officers were notified of the March 18th attack, they immediately began searching for the lion in freezing conditions with frozen snow on the ground. The incident this month is the first reported mountain lion attack on a person in Colorado since February of 2020 and is the 24th attack of a mountain lion that led to injury since 1990. Scary. Okay, and then there's an online sleuth who uncovered a group chat in Gwyneth Paltrow's ski case says it was comically easy. An online sleuth uncovered a group chat later submitted as evidence in the Gwyneth Paltrow ski slope trial and he said infiltrating the text took probably like two minutes even though it confounded courtroom attorneys. Paltrow's attorneys had asked the daughter of the man suing Paltrow about missing GoPro camera footage of the 2016 ski slope collision. The lawyers called it the most important piece of evidence at the ski collision trial. Michael Fletcher, a Court TV viewer, cracked the code info, excuse me, cracked the code in, into the link, found the hidden meetup group messages and sh and sent them to Paltrow's defense team. It's comical how easy it was, an incredulous Fletcher told Court TV's Julie Grant. They kept repeating that it's the most important piece of evidence and they couldn't figure it out. They had no idea. While the viewer opened the link to the video with his Google account, he uncovered messages from Craig Raman, a skier who claims to be the accident's only eyewitness. In the messages, Raman makes it clear that he knew that the Shakespearean love actress was the other party to the crash. You could not make this up. Gwyneth took out Terry last week, Raman wrote in chat. Last Saturday, her son broke his arm skiing at Park City. Gwyneth was staying at the Montage. She took her plane out of Millionaire Airport. What makes me mad is that Gwyneth took out Terry and then took off. Sanderson, who claims the crash left him with permanent brain damage, insisted that neither he nor his key eyewitness was aware that Paltrow was the skier who struck him. The chat made clear that Ramon thought Paltrow hit Sanderson long before Sanderson filed his lawsuit, and it shows that Sanderson and his compatriots knew the actress, the woman involved in the crash. Let's see. All I did was create a login for the website. It's a website that requires a login. You can't access anything on it without a login. And then the link works. It's simple. 
Fletcher seemed amazed the attorneys could not figure out how to access the link. Grant was floored by the revelation. So it wasn't the link that the link was bad or faulty or something like that, they asked. No, he said. He works as a tech investigator, but says he has no particular special skills. This is Sanderson. Oh, hold on a minute. Did I get you? Mountain Lion. No, no, there you now. Mountain Lion's going on there again. No, 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 Mountain Lion. We're done with you, Mountain Lion. There's nothing wrong with the link. Maybe I had just a little common sense. Sanderson is suing Paltrow for 300000 claiming she skied recklessly that day at the Ritzy Utah Ski Resort. Hmm. Okay, hang on a second. We got some more information about the headmistress at the school. Get up there, please. The headmistress of the Nashville Christian Academy that was killed in Monday's massacre, reportedly headed straight for the school shooter before she was gunned down. Catherine Kuntz was in the middle of a Zoom meeting when gunshots rang out shortly after 10 a.m. The 60-year-old headmaster, who was among six victims killed by the shooter, Audrey Hale, immediately jumped into action to help protect her young students. It is my understanding from a witness at the school that Catherine Kuntz was on a Zoom call when she heard the first shot. She immediately ended the call, got up, and headed straight for the shooter. She did what principals and headmasters do. She protected her children. The eyewitness did not have any details about any confrontation that might have happened between Hale and Kuntz. But Metro Nashville Police Chief John Drake said during a Tuesday press conference he is sure there was a confrontation because of the way she was lying in the hallway. Hale shot victims at random, the, random though she targeted the school. Other victims were custodian Mike Hill, substitute teacher Cynthia Peake, and three nine-year-old students. Okay, let's look at more at that, that uh, hazing in Georgia. The FBI has joined in on the investigation into the hazing and alleged torture of the Georgia teen Trent Lurkamp last week as an angry crowd gathered outside the victim's hospital to demand justice. Hundreds of people showed up for a vigil Monday night outside the hospital where the 19-year-old was being treated while many there holding candles and demanding legal action against the teens, students at nearby Glen Academy High School. No charges have been filed in the case, but local police said they are now consulting with the FBI and other agencies as the probe escalates. 
Claire Camp was dropped off at a Brunswick emergency room early Wednesday morning after he was plied with dangerous amounts of alcohol urinated on, spray painted from head to toe. The teen was placed on a ventilator in an ICU unit with a sky high 0.46 blood alcohol level, but his condition has since stabilized. Oh, well, that's good because they were saying. Um, The traumatized boy's father, Mark Larkamp, told police that he has been repeated that he had been repeatedly hazed and bullied by the same group of boys at a house in the wealthy enclave of St. Simon's Island. This was a still from a video that showed the boy being sprayed with water from a hose. And that video the stricken father said his son persists in associating with his assailants because he has no other friends several videos and photos of Lur Kemp's abuse were posted to social media in recent days sparking anger at the perpetrators and sympathy for the soft-spoken teen Police are investigating if a photo circulating on social media was taken from last week's incident. The image shows Lurkamp sitting unconscious, unconscious in a chair while covered in spray paint as several bird-flipping males stand behind him and mug for the camera. Lurkamp has received an outpouring of love and support from his local community. Just days before Tuesday's depravity left Lurkamp near death, his father told police that he went to the same location and came home covered in WD-40, vomit, paint, glue, egg yolk, and spray paint. The teens who dropped Lurkamp off the emergency room last week gave staffers their name and phone numbers but departed before police arrived. According to several media outlets, Lair Camp is a graduate of Glynn Academy. He lost his mother just two years ago when she was just 43 years old. She passed away at the same hospital where he is now being treated. Okay, back to the shooter. Um, this is a photo of the outside of the house where she lived. Look at that, there's little nut brown hair right here. I have that little nut brown hair that when I was pregnant for Ethan. And, um, guess how much I love you.
What is that? Just a bunch of junk out the back door. Neighbors said the police broke down the home's front door before the raid and used flash grenades to storm the residence. Shattered glass remains on the lawn. A back door and a front door are boarded up. Neighbors described Hale's mother as a religious person. Cops recovered a manifesto written by Hale at the home, as well as detailed maps of the Covenant School, where she was once a student. The images show a typical family home with red tulips popping up in the front yard, school portraits framed on a credenza, a wind chime with a cascade of crosses hanging in a window, and a child's bike propped against an exterior wall. But police said the brick Tudor-style house is where the mass shooter, identified as Audrey Hale, hid a cache of seven guns from her parents. Hale brought three of the deadly weapons, two assault rifles and a handgun to the Covenant School and gunned down three nine-year-olds, a school custodian, a substitute teacher, and the headmaster. She was shot and killed by police on the second floor of the Christian Academy. Investigators raided the Nashville house where Hale lived with her parents soon after and discovered the stockpile of firearms she had legally purchased from local stores. She did not purchase a sawed-off shotgun from a local store. Her parents told the cops that their adult child had just one gun, which they believed she had bought legally and then sold. Her parents felt she should not own weapons. They were under the impression that when she sold the one weapon that she did not own any more. As it turned out, she'd been hiding several weapons within the house. Open your eyes. The report was on the news. I was watching, and that all, but one was bought. The report that was on the news I was watching said they all but one. Oh, all but one? Okay. 
everything I'm reading is saying that they were all bought legally, and they all mentioned a sawed-off shotgun, which she's not buying anywhere legally. I wonder where she got the sawed-off shotgun. I'm just trying to go back in your chats here and see what's going on. Hi, Kevin Leonard. Please don't forget we have a karaoke coming up. Um, I'm not sure about uh, the auction. I don't know what to do. I don't think we're going to have an auction tomorrow. Uh, I may, I don't know. I, I, really, I have to check the weather. I really do have to get out um, and pick up some stuff. And I would like to do that tomorrow because Thursday and Friday I have appointments. So I don't know. You sent the email to Carolyn about his documents. Okay. Let me go there. Uh, thank you, Rich. I will go check that now. Um, Rich, did you... Let me see. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's see what you've got here now. Long-awaited court documents released. Okay, when was this? Because, okay. Um, Long-awaited court documents released. Well, what's released here? Let's see. Let's see. What documents are they? Because why am I? I can't listen to the video and they don't have a link to any documents. So I'm not sure what documents they are. sure they're not the ones we already saw last week because sometimes News Nation has a habit of um, releasing old news as new news. They've done that multiple times. I don't see it on any other news source. Did you listen to it? What documents are they? Because I can't listen to it. Let me know what documents they are. <laughs> Good fella, have they killed the shooter? The shooter of the Nashville school? Yes, they were killed within minutes. Let me see what Rich says. Let me know, Rich, because I don't see anything other than that News Nation video, but they have been known to do that.
They do that a lot. Internal Affairs has filed a petition that the court and police officers violated the Brady Law of Right to a Fair Trial because they could, on a technicality, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. And, and I'm sad to say, Rich, that um, Ashley Banfield and those others, they've really kind of earned the title of tragedy pimps because they um, come forward with a lot of things that are already have been released and they, they try to tout it as new or they try to say that something means something it doesn't mean. Um, they've done that countless times in this case and it's very disappointing. Very disappointing. They're not going to release him on a technicality. Believe me, you could take that to the bank. They're not going to release him on a technicality. You did, good fella. Where, where do you live, good fella? Where do you live? What country did you move to? I wonder where they moved to. Where did you move to? Switzerland. What part of Switzerland? What part of Switzerland? You don't have to sing, Chris Ray. You can just listen. I am so cold. I'm going to check out weather for tomorrow. You live by Geneva, but outside the city, what's the town? Big change in New York City, isn't it? Okay, so let me see the weather. Oh, let's see. So Friday and Saturday, there's going to be showers, rain. Wednesday into Thursday. Tomorrow's looking like it might be a little bit warm. 
but it says Wednesday evening we may get a coating to an inch of snow. That's the wild card. That's the wild card. So I don't know. It's saying there's a 90, yeah, great. 94% chance starting at 10 p.m. Snow is coming. 94% chance. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Burst of cold to trigger snow squalls and rapid freeze up. That's not good. That's not good. And there was just a, my son was just telling me that. There was a crash on, and it was so weird because I was just thinking about this at the sports award dinners, and um, yeah, fatal crash. Two died. Two died. Right up near us. Let me see here. It happened on 4 p.m. on Monday. Head on crash. Both drivers died. Thirty four year old and a twenty four year old. And I, and I know. I know this 24 year old because Luke told me the name. Very sad. Ugh, I hate to see that. Why is my face so white? You don't have to. You don't have to delete that. That's okay. Uh, why is my face so white? That's the color of my face. That's the color of my skin. I'm sorry if it uh, is not okay with you. That's the color that I am. That's okay. Hey. why I have to put a lot of sunscreen on when I go out in the sun in the beach but that's okay ten kilometers away from the city center my future daughter-in-law goes to Switzerland all the time because her company is based there. He probably meant pale. Well, I don't think I'm pale. I think that's the color of my skin. It's the color it always is. Okay. Um, I think I'm fair skinned, okay, but <laughs> that's that's the way it is. 
All right. Hi, Lyndall. So let's see what else we're going to do today. So we covered all those topics and everything else. Um, and then some. And now maybe I'm going to take a look at uh, something else right now. Let's see. You know, I was going on. We were talking about people last night. And I was uh, finding, I found that lady, Jenna. But I found her towards the end of things here. But I kept my page open. And I'm just going to go through a couple of things to see if I could find um, her. So let me just see here. And we did find a part where she talked about the camping trip. And I really tripped her up when I asked her what kind of car she had. Because allegedly she had 21 children. And with her husband and herself is 23. And she told me they all go in one car. And I said, well, what car do you go in? What kind of car do you have? And... She said, she got tripped up, and then she said a van, and I said, well, you must have a small school bus. Then I said, wait a minute, I don't even think a small school bus could fit 23 of you. And, uh, yeah, she got completely tripped up on that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. Have a good okay. night. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see. Now we've got, hang on. I'm Hi. here, Carolyn. Hi, who's this? Hi. This is Sally Hercock-Shewitt. Hi, Sally. From the... Hi, how are you, Carolyn? Good, how are you? That was Sally. Sally sells seashells. It could never be. We were brought out to the Survey 319 in the cover of darkness, not in the broad daylight. Oh. I think so, too. And, and one other topic. He did not miss. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. I do. I was a, a domestic violence advocate for like six years. It was something I could maybe contribute a little bit to. Excellent. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. There. I mean, just wanted to get the word out there that there are like these homes that are are hidden that women and children go to. So, um, like any police, um, police or social service agency would know about them. Mm -hmm. And they're, um, they're all over, you know, spread out throughout the United States, and uh, women can go to them if, if they're feeling unsafe. And usually um, the worst time for uh, a, a domestic crime to happen is, is right before a break. Okay, that one is not her, so let me go back. She was calling in right about this time. I just trying to get to the the first call with her, you know. I think I went on this one. Let's see. So something that warrants. <laughs> We used to, let's see. That one. Okay, it's not that one. Let's see. Treat your peeps to a magical... Okay, 
Why we don't have anything? Hang on, I'm trying to see because I know I'm right here, right on it. Let's see. I know that it has to be here because further up we have her calling in towards the end of her um, reign. Gypsy Blanchard. Okay, so I think. Hmm. Try this one. I oh, know that one would not be. I don't think it would be. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay. I'll just look for like three more minutes and then I'll stop if I don't get three more minutes. I'll give myself a three minute time limit and if I don't find it, something to do with that, I will give it up. Okay, we've got a caller here. I don't know who it is. Let's see. Let me see if I can see who this is. Yeah, Premrose, uh, I guess the executive director of the board, was contacted about us placing um, a the, this bench um, by the park that they, I guess they take the kids on their excursions to. Okay, that was seven. I don't know who it is. I don't know where else I can. What about the Facebook page? Oh, okay. Been watching, been watching your 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 um, live since, so I'm going to resubscribe. I love what you're doing. Okay, thank you. I can't get you here. Who is this? Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, is this Carolyn? Yes. Okay, it's Deb, BC Survivor. Hi, how are you? Deb, BC Survivor. Yeah, I haven't seen <laughs> Tanya. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to walk through my house and my shih tzu's under my feet. <laughs> I know who Tanya is. I don't remember Tanya. But you just didn't really see if. Okay, so we definitely don't I have Jenna. packed on up there. those girls and went back to North Carolina. Okay, let's go back. see which was the next one. Tanya. Tanya, Tanya. That was over here. So let's check after Tanya. No, I checked that one already. That's not. Check the one after that. got to be here. I know it does. Okay, here's one. Because 
I came across where she's already calling in about it was the Jody Arias case. And the person just keep. Sharon, they're not really secret then, right? You mean you look online and it says secret menu? Oh, we're talking about Sharon's secret menu. Really, Charlene? I was up there for the Paul McCartney con concert. Okay, so let's go. It's not that one. Um, I didn't realize the drone crash was in 2019. I'm really perplexed with that. Right, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, I didn't. Okay, someone, okay, we've got callers here, let's see. Every four years, four fallen champions reborn in legend. I'm supposed to know how to. I have now. Maybe you could, you know. Hold on here, so Kill two birds with one stone, and then when he's done, plant, you know, something in there. I, I wish, wish I had, had you know, I do actually have some land. That's not her. Wow. And they did live in a cave. This they one? did what? They lived in a cave. In a cave. There's a lot now that you can always got a boy over the age of five. This might be her. Because of the training they would have already had. Let me see. But Let me see what she says. They actually were not a military adoption. Their yes, this is her. This is her. Had This might be her first call. There she is, there she goes. Awesome sour cherries. Can you guys Where hear that? Those awesome sour cherries. We get sour cherries? Where? Not me, I guess. Now, for those of you listening, we've had a number of imposters oh, on our channel. Listening. One of the imposters was this girl and woman named Jenna. Here she Hi, is. Hi, Jenna. I oh, see she was already on, but Hi, we... can you hear me? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe she just told me her name. She wanna call it. Yes? Okay. Oh. How are you? Good, how are you? Um Okay. Where are you? Are you um, in the, the U.S.? You're in the Carolina, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, screen and it's not showing. You can't see me? Uh, no, I can see you, but you're talking about Jerry. Oh, there I am. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Are you in the U.S.? Yeah, I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. So, sure. you 21 kids? I believe, but that's probably not as many as we'll have because if ever a sibling is born, we take them because we want our children to always have their sibling. Wow. And how long have you had 21 kids? Um, well, three of them only appeared this year, so not that long. But you've, I mean, you... Have you had the, the older ones almost all their life? Yes. My oldest, Carl, who's 17, and my daughter, is a are from Puerto Rico, and they actually were not a military adoption. Their mother had um, cancer, and their biological mother. And when she passed, 
um, uh, they were left to us. And unfortunately, Isa was only three days old, but so I've had Isa for 15 years and Carl. Um, and they're good kids. And then the rest of the children. Now, the one thing that I'm not sure how we'll go over is I, my cousin was in the military and she found when she was, um, she was, uh, deployed in Afghanistan and we got, when she got home, she gave me a call and said, Jen, you have to take these kids. You have to, so they're from, um, they're, we have from Afghanistan, mm -hmm. we have from Syria, and we have from Lesotho, Africa, South Africa, and Carl and Isa. And, and where else? Uh, oh, I said Carl and Isa. Oh, oh, okay. Carl and Isa. So, um, and now the littlest ones you have that are all under a year? Yep. Um, Alexander was born in August. Addie was born March 1st. And then um, Zachary will be one in, on July 30th. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're, well, it's, it's amazing how much of a blessing they are. You're uh, a very special person to be able to, you know, handle that many children. I'm, I'm a very strict parent, mm -hmm. as is my husband. Um, my children are pretty good kids, though. They're... 11 and um, I'll give you my son Grant he is from Syria and he was born in the 2013 acid attack oh. we took him and he had infections and had to have skin graft and we were so we you know, you fall in love. As soon as you get told there's a child for you, you fall in love. Perido, this is one of the many imposters that have graced the stages here. This is Jenna. Then he had these fur, and we, they were infected, and we weren't sure he was going to make it. And he had to go through so much pain to get the infection and the good, uh, the, um, uh, the skin graft and all that. Hmm. So, but he's great now. He's 10 going on 60, I think. <laughs> he loves to watch Smash. Yeah. Um, but, uh, one of the things that that's because they're very strict parents little lady and everybody's and asleep obviously my husband and i are white we have two white children oh so actually we adopted from england where my husband is from and from the united states too. can i ask why um she said obviously my husband and i are white I don't even see this woman's face. How is it obviously her husband and her are white? It certainly wasn't obviously, right? Anyways, um, people have come up to, I guess it's better, I like it better when they come up to me because I'll tell them where to go. Mm -hmm. But they'll walk up to my children and say, you need to be with your own kind. Wow. Um, Tanya actually asked, me, how did I get the kids from Afghanistan? My cousin and my brother-in-law are both military, and my cousin knew we after my accident we couldn't have biological children, which it doesn't matter. Children are your children, and. 
um, once we got approved for military um, adoption, you can adopt pretty much immediately from anywhere where a child is in trouble. And do you have to travel there? You can adopt immediately, because she said, some immediately. Options, there's lots of requirements, and there's two trips, sometimes three. Do you have to go through all that, or is it different? It's different through the military. I what, One of the things we do is they're considered, I don't know, the military, as, as a colonel, who is in charge of cause, calls the children who are adopted to this way lost causes no one cares about, which is. Children are considered lost causes, so they just give them to anybody that wants them. The biological family will dispose of them if they don't give them to them. That's, uh, that's great. I, and then, so your youngest ones, they're, they're, are they, they're not siblings, they're siblings of sets that you have? Is that what it is? Yes. Um, all of the, so, for uh, my, um, children from Africa, usually the mother died in childbirth or whatever, but the father is still alive mm -hmm. and doesn't understand safe sex. Um, so as for um, my other ones, um, I don't want to get controversial or anything, but my children, obviously these were not their names when they lived in Afghanistan, but it's Landon, Gavin, Wari, mm -hmm. very, very Middle Eastern names. Right. Um, my daughter, who is now 15, she... It rains and snows, and uh, people don't know this in Afghanistan, but if it rained, the goat got in before the girls. Wow. And they did live in a cave. They did what? They lived in a cave. In a cave. There's a law now that you cannot adopt a boy over the age of five from the Middle East because of the training they would have already had. But uh, if you ever want to meet remarkable people, these kids are just they have honestly lived through things we couldn't have imagined and ahoy there can i be of a keep in mind that she did not have any of these kids she didn't adopt them she was from the massachusetts area every once in a while you'll hear an accent you will strong independent but my 17-year-old from Afghanistan loves to go to the movies with me, just me and him, probably because I love him by whatever he wants, but um, they are beautiful children and they are happy and healthy. And as for the amount of children, um, it's actually 22. I think I've mentioned this before, but I lost my daughter to a hate crime because she was black and we were white. Oh, wow. No, and I didn't know that. 
Sorry to hear that. Oh, oh yeah, she had one child um, that died. I, I don't know what to say to that because it's like, thank you, but I don't. Right. Um, it's been eight years. She was killed by a black woman who believed we were destroying her. Oh, I forgot she, this. Okay. Um, this is incredible. She says that her adopted daughter was killed by a black woman. I believe she said it was, the woman was someone in, I don't know, it happened in the courthouse. Let's listen to this, okay? This is, yeah, watch. Three days after her third birthday. Three oh days gosh. after her third birthday. You mean just randomly she or she knew you the woman that did this she was one of the representatives for to help with the culture change mm -hmm. and we had just adopted my younger daughter emma who i'm sorry not emma um Kaylin and she um, didn't realize my husband James was British and apparently British people are evil and we were white and apparently we British people are evil she said costume. she actually usually wore Oscar the Grudge because she loves that but um, she thought we were trying to wipe her. And this was a profession. The woman that was helping with the culture um, transition felt that because Jenna's fake husband, James, was British and British people are allegedly evil according to this woman and felt that this white couple was trying to white this black child is what she said. Let's finish. Oh boy. A woman that was helping you with the transition? Yes, who was from South Africa. Africa. And, and she did this in your house with you there or She, That's horrible. She did it the courthouse after the adoption was signed of my daughter. Oh my. She killed the three-year-old in the courthouse after the adoption was final. Now, believe me, I looked up to see of a case in Massachusetts where a three-year-old child was killed after an adoption, because that would be news, would it not? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And she's in jail now, right? She was killed by the guards. She was killed by the guards of the courthouse? Yeah. Wow, that and and this happened in Massachusetts. Yes, um, it was reported on the news and all that, but um, sorry, I uh, her name was Keisha, and it's still hard to talk about her. I imagine and that's horrendous. I've never done drugs in my life. Thank you. Why, did someone say something? What happened? She said, hang up the call, she's on meth. Oh, don't pay it there, it's probably a troll. Yeah, don't pay attention to that. Um, that is horrible. I mean, that's that's insanity. I mean, it's even, it's incomprehensible. Yeah. I'm so sorry, that, that, eight how eight long eight ago, eight how long eight ago? Eight how long ago did that happen? Eight years, eight eight years, years. ago? Oh my yeah, gosh. Eight years. Oh, that's that's terrible. I'm so sorry. 
they do it, it it's a strange um I will tell you um people can be very their minds are not open to a family that doesn't look like a cookie cutter family. Right. Yeah. People can be cruel. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's some woman that's supposed to help you with the transition. And that's just unbelievable. I, uh, I didn't mean to get that deep into it. I, um wanted to mention that if you go onto the military website, um, any office, you can absolutely find how to adopt through the military. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, one of the things you can do is adopt children from the United States who lost both parents um, in, you know, the last, but it's, sorry, I, I, um, a little bit of crying and I can show you understand why. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's horrendous. I mean, I can't even believe that. That's just. Um, but yes, uh, back to the but happy not. Um, so all of my children from wherever they're from have their siblings with them, which is important to us. We, James and I both grew up in houses with us, with a big family and, um, It can be loud and just crazy, but I wouldn't give it up for the world, and I wouldn't trade them for the world. Well, they're lucky to have you, and you're lucky to have them, and you're you you and your husband both wonderful people to do that. You know what I mean? And uh, provide a home, a loving home for the kids, and you know you're you're both blessed. Now I will admit, our parents do both live with us because we need the help. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I don't, you know, my 17 and 15 and 14, I don't expect them to help me raise my children. Right. I expect that of my mother and my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both sets of parents live with them because she needs help and she does not expect her older kids to parent her younger kids. then you're also going to hear about the parents of these children that she adopted from Puerto Rico or the grandparents that also live with them, I believe, if I can remember correctly. <laughs> but, um, I was nervous about calling and telling all this also. It's, um, you either get it or you don't, and it's, um, I don't know, just, uh, anyways, um, one thing that, um, my daughter wore, in, uh, in her original religion, dancing and stuff was not allowed. And now she does competitive dance. <laughs> um, there are just so many different, <sighs> where they started and who they've become. My two 17 year olds have more college credits 
than most sophomores in college. Terrific. And it's someone at school. That's and great. it's not because we push, it's because they love knowledge. That's great. Uh, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, the, there were more people like you and your husband, you know, you definitely make the world a better place and improve the lives for the kids and, you know, and you're blessed in return with that. So wonderful. That's a wonderful story. Thanks. And I hope um, if anyone is ever thinking about bringing another child in and whether you want biological, you had biological, you're thinking of adopting, it's a beautiful thing and there is no difference. And what about the, the cost with the military is, um, is cause international adoption, regular adoption can be very, very expensive. Is, are the costs dramatically different with the military? Yes, because they're considered, considered throwaway children or children nobody would want because they're connected to war. And this is such BS. <laughs> okay. Yes, there's uh, no cost with the military adoptions. They're considered throwaway children. No one wouldn't want them. Really, what about all the children that were adopted from Vietnam? What about all the children that are still adopted from Vietnam? Okay, it's not free. This woman is just so insane. Okay, they're considered throwaway children. So go to your military website and you should be able to adopt those throwaway children, children that nobody wants because they're connected with a war, and you'll get them for like little to no cost, okay? So can somebody check that out and let me know how that goes? And stuff. But it has to be, there are certain, you can't adopt a child from North Korea, for example through the military because um, it's just not allowed. Right. Uh, and the children do have to be okay that they're not going to do anything, which I hate because I understand it. Trust me, I understand we need to protect. But at seven, no seven-year-old wants to be a suicide bomber. A seven-year-old is forced to be. Mm -hmm. And um, you. If you want a. Last, okay. my son, um, I, I'm just going to, um, he, um, I don't know where he got this idea, but occasionally he'll go, I'm black, I don't care. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm black, I can swim in the ocean. We live in an island, kid. <laughs> and I finally said, Eric, why do you keep telling me the color of the skin your skin makes you not do stuff? And he said, She did say that, Barb. She said, No seven year old wants to be an S bomber. Because I had a homeboy, and he made the little West Coast symbol. Mm -hmm. And I said, Sweetie. You, you please don't ever do that in public. I really like you, and I want to keep you. <laughs> oh wow! So that's uh, that's a great like, like I said, you're you're a great uh, family, and you know I'm maybe sharing that uh, a lot of people I know try to adopt and they can't afford it or. Um, it's they can't travel and so maybe you've opened up some 
Samaya is here to a different way to do things. Um, military websites are, and at first they'll think you're trying to adopt off a child, but you just need to go a little further into it and then you can be paired. And also right now, in case you want to adopt from China, you can adopt from China and um, lawyers in the United States are not charging the normal fees. All you pay for is with, uh, of course, this adoption, you'd have to travel, but you'd pay for the traveling and um, the Chinese part of the paperwork, which is a lot less expensive. Mm -hmm what's going on right now in case you ever want to adopt. That is total BS. China's one of the most expensive places to adopt from. They're not giving out uh, free adoptions in the United States. Lawyers are not waiving their fees. They've even tightened their regulations of their adoptions in China at this time. She is such a liar. Right, because China is very expensive and they have requirements, uh, a lot of requirements that people, can, you know, if somebody's ever taken an antidepressant, they can adopt from China. If someone um, is uh, has passed a certain BMI, they can not adopt from China. If they've ever been diagnosed with depression, they can not adopt from China. And I'm talking about you know, the regular Chinese international adoptions through through agencies, yeah. right? There's so many restrictions because then China was, um, they were adopting out so many children from the early 90s that they cut back because even though they had the children, they weren't adopting the children out because they thought it looked bad for so many Americans to be adopting their kids. Yeah. Yeah, and but. that was ridiculous. And so they put the tight restrictions on them, and they just had the kids age out of the orphanages and end up basically on the street, you know, instead of adopting mm -hmm. them into the homes that wanted them. Um, that's one of the reasons that right now a lot of the agencies are doing, because it's turned a lot of Americans off of wanting to adopt there. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons that they're cutting the fees because um, it's, well, when you rather the child just be left and instead of find a good home, it says a lot about the person. Right, right, yeah. Yep. I agree, and um, and and not to mention that it's it's very 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 expensive to adopt from China through an agency like Holt or, you know, um, one of the other agencies. So yeah, if there's a, I mean, I there's probably a lot of people you've helped, and probably if it's not for them, they know someone that they'll recommend that to, and you know, hopefully we'll get some kids into good homes. Please, and if anyone has any questions about it, I'll be happy to answer. Um, I've and I've been able to do this after my accident with um, being hit by a car while out for a run. So you, um, even though I'm disabled, I um, still the kids come first no matter what and. Oh, you do have to have a first home study through the military, but the next, uh, for the rest of them, you don't. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a little issue with that, though, because what if people are just adopting to, I don't know, just check in once in a while. Um, did you catch that? She, they were able to adopt to her even though she was hit by a car while on a run and she's disabled. And you only need one home study with the military for subsequent adoptions. They don't even do another home study, which she's a little concerned about. Because what if people are adopting for, well, you know.
Right. They should. So they, they only do the military only does a home study for the first adoption and not after that. When you're willing to adopt siblings, yes. Um, I'm not sure about singletons because I've not done that through the military. Mm -hmm. um, also, if any of you guys can adopt a sibling group, uh, please do. It's just imagine not knowing your brother or sister. Right, yeah, it's a great thing that you're doing. So, um, you know, and you're blessed to have an extended family to help so that, you know, it's a good thing, great thing. And like I said, you may have helped uh, other people. And if you have questions, um, you can ask in the chat or ask, um, you could send me an email and I can try to get in touch with Jennifer or you if you have questions. Yeah, I'll send you my email. Okay. Even. All right, very good. And uh, thanks for calling in. That was a great call. And I think, um, you know, hopefully you can help someone, even if, even somebody listening to this at a later uh, time, you know? Yeah. Um, kids are... Don't worry, you don't have to adopt 21 children. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I think you've helped a lot of people because that's the one thing I hear all the time is that they can't find kids or even older, you know, kids. It's too expensive to adopt internationally. So if there is um, something that can, you know, help them adopt and help kids get a home, that's great. The most wanted child is a boy, a boy baby under three months, blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just go for anything but that. Right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jenna, and um, I appreciate you calling in. Thank you, and um, thanks for. And mild, about mildly, my yeah, mildly sunny said um, she'd appreciate the website. Do you have a? Do you know the website offhand? Um, I usually do the uh, to go through the Army. You just type in United States Army, and then you ignore all the list and stuff, and you go into Family, and then you click into Adoption, and then you make sure that you don't accidentally adopt yourself out. <laughs> and um, it's um, a couple pages deep, but you'll find it. Okay. And just uh, the United States Ar Ar Army Corps, yeah, the United States Army, and um, just go through that, and you'll find all the information. And if you're looking for domestic adoptions, I personally prefer not the huge adoption group places because they're in it for the money and I don't think they really care about the kids. Okay, yeah. And I know that sounds mean, but... Okay, very, um, very good. I, you know, and then if, um, yeah, if you email me so that if anybody else has any, um, you know, questions, I can put them in touch with you, that would be great. All right. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. All right. So I think. Um... Elizabeth. Right. That's good. And um, we kind of kidnapped my oldest son. We've been troll attacked. Christina, I'm oh, going to, no. well, I know, Christina, I'm going to give you uh, my um, cell phone to text me. If VVT was here, she has it. Somebody has to text me the next time. I feel terrible. Okay, Jenna, check my email. All right.
I need like an alert on that. I, I didn't see anything. And I just sort of say, well, I can't, I, I, feel, I feel terrible. If you're watching this later, cowgirl, I am really sorry. Cowgirl, maybe I'm gonna give you my text and you can, um, I'll send you my, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send my, my cell number to cowgirl. And if you're on here, cowgirl, and I'm not looking up, then, then you can text me with the words, look up. Not your fault, Carolyn. Six hundred. Yeah, I just feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to send her my um, my cell phone so she can text me if I'm not looking up the next time. Hello. Hi. Hi. Who's this? Jen. Who is Jenna. it? Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Can Can you hear me, Jenna? Oh, yes, I was waiting to Oh, okay. Is this Jenna with the 21 kids? Yes. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to know a little bit stocky, but I, I was actually making sure you got my new email address and... Um, you just sent it to me? Uh, yeah, because the other one was giving me trouble. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, did you read the email? No. Should I read it now? Uh, I just go over a few things about the uh, adoption and uh, my accident and that's why sometimes it takes me a minute to answer because I have a DEI. So, um, I just wanted to clarify that I'm not slow or anything, I just have brain damage. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but yeah, that we don't think you're slow. Um, I've been through worse. Yeah. And if I, if I was ever in that accident, I wouldn't have my kids, so. Right, right. So what did you, you uh, said you wanted to clear something up with the adoption? Uh, yeah, I saw that there were questions the other day about the fact that one, I could adopt so many children. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that is I have, my husband and I are the parents, but my parents, his parents are, hands-on completely help us but also give us family time and we live they live with us right that's good and um we kind of kidnapped my oldest son and my daughter is his grandparents they oh. were still alive but they were unable to take custody of them okay. so we just brought them with us Oh, okay. So you have three sets of grandparents? You said you have his birth grandparents? Their birth yeah, grandparents have, with you? Uh, no, we have my parents, my husband's parents, who are from Britain. Right. And then we have my children. I guess that's the time to explain. Uh, my children's biological mom parents oh that's what i mean yeah they're, they're biological grandparents so you have three sets of grandparents yes and they all live with you and they all have a room with their own bathroom and privacy oh good and then you have enough help yeah right i mean that's still a lot 21 but yeah at least you have you know six extra people right to help out I like to joke, I worked at a daycare from this, I, well, I babysat as well as my and nanny, and then when I turned 16, I um, nannied um, and worked at a daycare. And I like to joke that I just took the daycare home with me. <laughs> yeah, definitely, right? So, but yeah, it's good to have that help and that your husband and you get some time 
by yourselves. I forgot to tell you that Jenna um, starts to use scenarios from stand-up comedy for stories about her kids because I would punch in the things she was saying into Google and it was showing me comedians jokes that were written into routines that she was repeating as her own funny stories. She now says she has brain damage, not just disabled, she has brain damage and that's why she sometimes speaks slowly. Her speech will go from fast to slow. She will sing a happy birthday song that's really, really fast when it's someone's birthday. And now she has, besides the 21 kids and her husband and herself, which is 23, they have six grandparents living with them, 29 people, and they each have their own room with their own bathroom. Okay. Yes, and also, uh, what's important to us is having family time with just the immediate yeah, the kids and us. And right. we manage it. It's not always easy, but um, my husband works from home, and um, I actually am probably the biggest liability mm -hmm. because sometimes. I was, um, I was hit pretty bad by a, in my accident. I was out for a run and I was hit by a car. Oh, wow. And, um, I was rod, titanium rod in my upper and lower leg hmm. and a titanium plate in my hip. And I didn't think I'd ever walk, talk, write, anything like that again. They thought I was well, first day I was in a coma, and then it was okay, I was walking the hospital. And I'm back walking six miles a day. Oh, six miles a day, wow, great. That's I used to run it, but little things. I yeah. shoved some kids in the stroller lots of the time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Walking is great, great and going out there, and nature and everything is wonderful. So I'm glad that uh, you beat the odds. Yes, uh, a few years ago, I, was, I called and I needed to have a checkup on my titanium. And uh, the person actually said to me, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I went, excuse me? <laughs> I, I thought they were talking about my daughter. Which right. Was, but um, they said, yes, we're sorry about Jennifer passing. And I went, I am Jennifer. And I'm alive. They thought I was long dead because they didn't think I'd live two years past the accident. Wow. Crazy. Wow. So they must have been had quite a surprise. Yeah, I, I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Give uh, me, give me, a, tell me something I can't do, and I'll do it. Right. Um, also, um, for military adoption, I was, um, I it had been long. I forgot about something. Um, you need to have a military family member. It doesn't have to be in your direct family. It can be a cousin, an uncle, a brother-in-law who served. But it doesn't have to be someone active. Is it just someone that served, or do they have to be active yeah. military? It has to be someone who served, and it has to be someone that served within. They cannot be. Um, it's not just what it has. They have to have served in the last 10 years from wherever the adoption takes place. I see. Okay. But it can be, it can even be their sibling, like if it was your brother or your husband's brother, would that count? Yep. Um, yep. My cousin is the one that found my children from Afghanistan. 
she was deployed over there and she was a teacher with the girls. Mm -hmm. And she said to have to get these kids out of here. Um, but that's important to know that um, also the home study, because they only do it every 10 to 15 years for adoption right. to the military, it is they will know if you wet your pants when you were in preschool. Oh, they, they will. They go back really far and really intense. Okay. So. Uh, and I also She's saying that the military, since they only do a home study every 10 to 15 years, they will know back, they go back so far, they'll know in kindergarten if you wet your pants. I think she's trying to scare some people off here. Um, she said that you must, she made a mistake for the military adoption. You must have a family member or yourself be in the military. <clears throat> she said that she was in that accident and then she was in a coma. They didn't think she'd wake up, but they said that she would never walk, talk, write again. And that when she went to the hospital to have her titanium or something checked, they said, I'm sorry for your loss because they thought she died. That, that made absolutely no sense. Okay. That's a, that's a lot of people that are looking to adopt that don't have a military connection, um, which to adopt for uh, war-torn children who are called throwaways, they're just left on the street to die. Cause, um, you, um, to adopt them, it's important that You know, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of struggle. And the first time they say "I hate you," mm -hmm. it's kind of the greatest feeling because it means they feel safe. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Um, and but uh, military adoptions, of course, are hard, and you don't get money back from the military for adoption one to one hunt kids which someone said that i adopted for the 200 okay she said that <clears throat> you don't get money back from the military for the adoption the first time your child says i hate you it's such a great feeling because they feel safe and Julie W., I don't know, I think she was trying to scare people off from looking too much further by saying that they were going to go back that far. Or either that or try to validate herself, her, her, her uh, integrity. I don't know. Yeah, because a child costs $200 for their whole life. Anyways, um... There are a lot of ways to adopt domestically now mm -hmm. that there are grants, there are um, so many things you can do and all it just takes sitting at your computer and seeing what can be given. Just eighteen to twenty thousand dollars to a Adopted child domestically. That's, I personally think anyone that passes the right to adopt and is a good, loving parent, if the child's going to be, but I know my me and all that. Um, but there, there are a lot of grants, there are a lot of things that all you need to do is speak up and you need to ask your agency and your lawyer to look into what you can get discounted besides um so that people that don't have a lot of i don't know many people that just have twenty thousand dollars to spend and it's not 
defended, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it's, you can get it down. Um, I have a few friends who brought it down to uh, five or six thousand, which is still a lot, but at least is twelve thousand less. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's a lot of money. Somebody just said they sp paid more than 50000 to adopt. Oh, my word. Did, Did you adopt, adopt a sibling? Yeah. I don't. Let me see. Did you? Soulful music. Soulful Did you adopt? Yeah. Did you adopt a sibling? Just, just one baby? I believe it. They said it was one. I think if, it, if I'm not mistaken, it was one from the United, one baby, a newborn, from the United States, right, Sol? Yeah. Well, thank you for adopting. Thank you for being able to uh, Sol for me to. Adopt in Australia only from only from overseas is that that's what you're saying Lily Bell you can't adopt in Australia why can't you adopt in Australia I, I don't know why can't you adopt in Australia Lily Bell Chance she'll probably take a second to. Uh, why we're waiting for this? Why? Don't, oh. oh, somebody said, What do they do with kids that don't have parents in Australia? She says, No problem. So sorry for confusing you all with my email. This, oh no, now she's talking about her email. Lily Bell, why can't you adopt children in Australia? I was told by a woman who was adopted there are not that many children to adopt. That's I don't know what that's not the one that's not the one about Australia. That's someone else. Um, there are. Let me see. Um, what they said to you. Uh, Lindy, um, they were most likely talking about one race, uh, not biracial, not this or that. It's, um, one of those things that even in the United States, it Oh, she says. Oh, she they says. Want a, they want a. They want a. They want a white baby, right? A newborn baby, and there's not. That, that's what you're saying, right? They, there's not that many, and there's a long waiting list. And but now people are, you know, I think they'll take. So many are just, even just a newborn of any kind, and sometimes they're still having problems with that. But. Um, let me see now. Lily Bell said, you can't adopt in Australia, only overseas. It's the law. Awful. Foster till legal age. 
Okay, so you're allowed to foster a child in Australia, but you can never adopt them. Is that correct, Lily Bell? So they, they, you, you have the children, but they're just foster children? But there are children that are, that they're given to foster parents, but never for adoption. Even Until though, there's no age. And that's... I guess that's what she means, yeah. That's just wrong. Every child deserves a home. Oh, hi, Aftershock. Lily Bell, you can, but only adoption is... Aditi, what? Lily Bell, you can adopt in Oz, but overseas adoption is the only real-time option. Okay. Oh, um, Aftershock, you have to mute your YouTube. Aftershock, you need to mute your YouTube. A guy on my street was adopted. I'm in Australia. Yes, the list is long. I have heard this. The guy on my street is Australian, was adopted by Australian parents. He is married with his own children. And then Lily Bell says, when I tried, we could not adopt. Has it changed, Aussies? It used to be foster till they age out. Dee Dee says, you can adopt in Australia, reconciliation, always given priority. Michelle Clifford, she has to read these comments. What comments, Carol? Let's see. What am I doing wrong now? Put your face up, Mommy. My face has been up. I've been, don't tell me now. Is my face up now? My face is up now in my monitor. Please tell me my face is up. You're actually frozen on my screen. I'm frozen? Okay. I'm not sure if it's. Um, am I frozen to anyone else? I'm frozen? No. Okay. You guys are... Isn't my face up where you can read my lips? Can you read my lips if you could read lips? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, don't forget the cowgirl that was making me making me keep putting my face up so she could read my lips. Okay. I'm not frozen and my face is up. Okay. I'm getting scared. Yes, can read lips if you could. Okay, good. All right. Um, Am uh, Go ahead. For Lily, though, um... If you adopt from China right now, everything except for expenses to go over and pick up the child is paid for. The, uh, the, oh, but you're in Australia, so I don't know if that's something I hear. Yeah. Um, Lily, well, if you are really interested today in and you, um, Aren't a serial killer? I will um, happily write you a um, recommendation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're not a serial killer, Lily Bell, so you're gonna have to come clean with that. You can't be a serial killer, and you can't do flip flop and flip flop. Yeah, no flip flop digging. Um. Oh, the other thing, this is a message from my husband. Because I have screws in my legs from the titanium rods that right. are inside my bones, uh -huh. I tell them he's not allowed to say I have a screw loose. Oh, but you, you could, right, though? Yeah, but he doesn't think that way. Her husband's not right. allowed yeah. to say she has a screw loose. Because she has titanium rods in her legs from the accident. Just say, Jamie, be quiet. You want everybody to say that? Yeah, everyone yell at my husband. Oh, okay. Don't say that. 
Um, that's really about. Read about what? Oh, um, I'm just. The, part of the issue with Australia, I, I Googled, uh, is people do not want over the age of one. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, not just Australia, there's a lot of people in general that want, you know, a newborn. And so, yeah, that that's, you know, something that's been for a long time. But, yeah, there's, there's always been a harder time placing older kids or sibling groups, right? Yeah, in which I, we still have siblings that are being born. The father has lost all right um, because of whatever they may have done. You don't need to have the FBI and the family board, so like we will play through with that. Um, so um, any child born to the father, especially in the Middle East because of the oh men are the great thing, um, the children is automatically being um, unsuitable um, and if you do not adopt, we'll be left that. Oh, Keep It Kind says, it is due to a case that happened in Thailand and adoptions became illegal. The story has to do with a couple adopting twins with a surrogate and they left the disabled child and they smuggled the healthy baby back. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Who's that? Oh, hi. This is Soul for Music. Oh. oh, hi. Uh, hi. Um, so I just wanted to join. Um, my son is adopted, and there's a lot of complications, I think, when it comes to it, at least in my case. Um, we did privately. You know, we adopted him through a private organization out of Arizona. Mm -hmm. Um I know every case is different, and I know there's things like the state level, so you can adopt through the state. Um, so we could have chosen to do it for nothing, um, for free, and could have put our names in a hat, basically, and said, hey, we want to adopt a kid, and uh, we'll take anyone. But we wanted a newborn, and I think that's what a lot of people want. For my case, mm -hmm. um, I can't have kids. Um, I'm physically unable. I unfortunately went through menopause at 34 years old and can't have children naturally. So we decided to go the route of adoption. And um, when we started our journey, it was like, what do we do? We don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, it, right. it, it was new to us. And um, we learned a little bit about it, looked through throughout the whole country. and found that that was the cheapest route for us was Arizona. And they have the least amount of time for you to have to wait for them to sign the rights over. So in my state, I'm in New Hampshire. It's, I believe, a week. I'm going to say a week, just, just give or take. Um, in Arizona, it's 72 hours. So when the baby's born, mm -hmm. we, we can see the baby, we can hold the baby, we can be in the room, we can, we can be right there with him, um, but he's not technically ours until 72 hours, but the birth mother has a right to change her mind. So we sit there for 72 hours and wait for her to say, okay, I'm done, I can't do this, I'm really going to hand this baby over to these people that I've chosen. Which in our case, it was about two, three months. Other mm -hmm. cases could be longer, it could be less. It doesn't matter. Uh, every case is different. Um, we were lucky. <laughs> I say that. 
um, because the birth mother, she had issues. Um, most children born and that are being put up for adoption, they're not perfect. You're not going to get that baby that comes out of a, you know, I'm saying like if I were to give birth, <laughs> that baby would be, in our eyes, perfect. No flaws, no drug addiction, no any of that stuff. Um, not going to lie, my son was born dependent on drugs. Um, <laughs> we went through some stuff, but nothing major. Luckily, he, this is going to sound weird, but he was a preemie. He was four pounds, six ounces. Mm -hmm. um, because he was a preemie, he didn't go through such harsh withdrawals. Um, he was born addicted to methadone and heroin, which seems to be the common trend. Um, but because of that, the fact that he was so small, the drugs didn't adhere to him. Um, they say that the body fat, I guess, is what absorbs the drugs. I don't, I don't know how else to word it. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to say it perfect. But because he was so small, he didn't have to go through it so hard and he was out of the NICU within two weeks, and we were able to come home in less than a month. That's unusual. Um, but what we're told from, you know, the whole adoption, because we're going for round number two, we like another newborn, um, <clears throat> again, harder, but that's what we want. So we're willing to wait, but it, it's harder to find a clean, and I say clean, um, a drug-free baby who isn't going to go through those harsh withdrawals. But it is very hard. It's very difficult. And the decision-making decision is very difficult because you're given a profile. So we were handed, uh, you know, I say handed, emailed a profile of a birth mom. And mm -hmm. the way it looks is, okay, this is the birth mom. Um, she's, you know, we'll say six months pregnant. Um, she's going to have a boy, or maybe she doesn't know. Uh, the birth father is um, John Doe. He's white, or he's black, or he's Mexican, or he's whatever. She's this, she's that, she's five, six, blah, blah, blah. And we have to look at that and say, okay, are we comfortable with this? And the biggest part for us, and, and I'm not trying to sound, you know, because most people, some people would go, okay, we'll take this baby no matter what. Well, we're not in the position to be able to take care of a baby who is born with fetal alcohol syndrome or um, born addicted to methamphetamines or because different drugs do different things. Um, what we know from our son is we can handle the opioid thing or, uh, I don't know. Either way, it's, it's tough. I don't know. It's a hard thing. Adoption's hard because you sit and you wait. We've been waiting for a year now since my son was born just for a profile. I mean, we've gotten a couple but just to get one that we're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult. I mean, uh, and to pay, I mean, we paid a lot of money. We paid 46000 for my son. Now, is that, and because, then, is that because you had to support the birth mother? Um, and that's the thing that's tough. She gets money. She got eight grand out of what we paid. Eight grand. So you're paying for her to be fed, clothed, um, you put her in a hotel. Because, again, most of these birth moms, they're not good, and they're not healthy. And this one we dealt with, oh, it was terrible. It was hard. I wish I, oh, if I could just put you guys there, you, oh, trust me. My, I didn't even tell my husband most of the things that were going on because I was like, he's going to freak out. Like, like, I could handle this better than him, but she disappeared. She would be, like, gone. Like, like oh, we don't know where Chrissy is. Oh, she is. Oh, it doesn't matter. But Jane Doe, 
know. We, we don't, don't know where she is, is. and right. she's gone, and oh, we found her, but she's off doing this. Oh, it was, it was hard. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot. You know when um, you see Adoption Story? Do you know Adoption Story on TV? Have you no, ever seen that? No, I don't think I do. Oh, well, there used to be a show called Baby Story, and then they made one on Adoption Story, and they would follow oh. a couple that adopted in various forms mm-hmm. of adoption. A lot of them were newborn adoptions in the United States. Mm-hmm. And they always had, like, you know, that they were connected with the birth mom and, yeah. you know, calling about the sonogram. And then when they went out there, mm-hmm. they would do, a, like, a little tense moment where was she going to relinquish her rights? But it, yeah. they never no. had them, like, you know, disappearing or saying they no. were on drugs or anything. They were just, yeah, no. you know, looking for a it better life. It's a fairy tale. 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 It's a fairy Implied that um, adoption of newborns from the state isn't hard as you have it Oh, no, no, no. I don't want you to think that. I, I didn't think that at all. No. And, well, I'd also like to thank you for taking the baby with the opioid because that's not easy. No. And it's hard. A lot of people wouldn't do it. And no. Well, I appreciate that, but don't don't think anything I'm saying has anything to do. I appreciate what you're doing. I mean, you're tr- trust me. You've been through a lot more than me, you know. So don't don't even think that for a second. Um, my son, he's doing well. He's happy. That's what we want. He's not talking much. I mean, he's two and a half, and he doesn't talk much. I mean, he does a little bit. Am I concerned? No. I'm not, um, because I think it has to do with that, and I think it's just a delay. Um, but I don't know. It, it it is what it is, you know. And well, he's happy. That's what matters. And it sounds like what you're doing with your children and everything, and and you've been through a lot. You seem to be happy, and that's what matters. That's it, you know. Like, so no worries. It's all good. I'm just glad to hear that you guys are talking about this because I don't think a lot of people talk about it. Be involved. That's a given. Just basically. Those people are dumpster diving without gloves and stuff in. Phone because they're not working in the same area. I'll never be able to get there. And I was like, okay. I'm like, do you want me to go back and get no he said dude we've got to go because there was like a line behind him and I'm, came up wow he got it a little bit cheaper i think it had a little bit cheaper i said a little bit cheaper guys he got the wood flooring okay i'm not joking i'll show you the box i this is shaw hardwood flooring oak flooring real flooring not laminate he got it down i don't know how to 99 cents a square foot Okay, I nearly passed the freak out, okay? Jimmy's on the phone. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, crap, right? Because we were, we were only getting it for our master bedroom, our master walk-in closet, and the upstairs foyer, okay? We were going to get something else for the kids' bedrooms, right? I'm like, are you kidding me, right? So I'm standing there and I'm nearly having a heart attack, but I don't want to say anything that's going to throw this guy off. So I said, you know what, Claude? <clears throat> Let me just check with my husband because I think we might not have figured in all that we need on that, right? So then I'm trying to tell Jimmy, but you know what, without him making a big deal, like, cause he'd be the one that's going, 99 cents, that's gotta be a mistake that we need we, right so i'm so i'm i'm trying i said jimmy listen to me i went over to him i said i think we have figured it wrong and i said jimmy this and i kept saying to this guy is giving us an incredible price right i said we can do i think we because we were getting something else for the other bedrooms i said 
we can do all the bedrooms upstairs. Now, you know right off the bat, just you estimate high, because we knew the sizes, right? Said, just estimate high, get extra, I don't care. We'll never see this price again. We're gonna get everything we can. So um, we did, and uh, we, got it, we got it, and it was incredible. And it, it, was, it was insane. It was an insane thing. And then I found out, I think this guy, Claude, because the other contractors behind me on the pro desk, when they came through, I heard one go like this. Claude, are you gonna give me, you're gonna give me those good prices, right, Claude? So I think Claude, I don't know what he was doing with the numbers, but everybody knew him and he was getting them some really good prices. I mean, it'll be cool, I mean, but I've never found it like, ooh, I don't know, but I, I wear house Crocs. I'm sure if you wore bare 375, they're coming for your gas furnaces, oil boilers, wood stoves, and gasoline-fueled cars. And I got it for three twenty-five dollars in an electronic store, like, like it would be a Best Buy, but of course it wasn't Best Buy at the time. Toyotas are so expensive, um, but worth, yeah, they are. I mean, I had a 4Runner, and my daughter had the RAV4, and she had the... Um, Oh my gosh, what's the red, the Matrix? And then Jimmy had a Tacoma, the big one with the double cab. Yeah, very good. Hi, you have your Thrive patches on? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you got them on, good, good. You're still going. I got one. I see on you right here on your neck, below your neck, on your head. And oh, there too. Wow, three. You're doing more than Chris did. Yeah. You better be careful. And you've got your neck up. You need to hold your neck up. Oh, great. <laughs> You're all set. You, got, you should be the poster child for the late night uh, call in. Well, you know, it's almost noon here. Oh, okay. And I have to go. Right. Yeah, shopping. I also have um, family and, and stuff. So I wanted to just say a quick um, goodbye to everybody. See you next time. Okay, you see you. And uh, you work on your art. Is that painting behind you finished? Mm, Not so I'm much? Working on, working on it? Do you have a design for uh, Mommy Mommy? Or? No, not yet. You want to work on one? I'd love to. Okay, great. Perfect. So we'll stay in touch. Uh, I want to say good, good bye to everybody. Okay. Stay here. Not my... You got your Thrive on. You're just thriving. Okay. Okay, you keep shining. We'll see you. <laughs> so okay, see you. Bye. All right, bye. Too funny. Oh, shit. How do you turn it off? oh, don't curse again. Come on now. <sighs> you leave meeting. This lady was some lady in Germany or something, okay, and she came on and she was saying that she had to stay up, so she was putting thrive patches all over her and um, wrapping something around her neck so that she wouldn't nod off and fall asleep. It was a little weird, to say the least. It was a little weird. <laughs> Pretty weird. All right. But um, yeah, that was Jenna, and those were Jenna's first two call-ins, and she was constant with the theme. The theme was that she was constantly being told by people she shouldn't be having um, children that were not racially the same as her and her husband. And it was, a, it was a constant theme. And then she had this whole thing where her daughter got uh, murdered in the courthouse by someone that was help, helping with the adoption, about the mixing the cultures. And I could not find a thing about it. And she said her daughter was three years old. Her name was Keisha. 
She said that the guards in the courthouse shot the woman that killed her daughter. Um, this is crazy. There was nothing about it. In another call, she gives like, she started to send me pictures. Let me see if I can find her pictures of her in the ambulance after her accident. Um, first, she had about two, three different. Uh, email addresses Let's see here she shared 12 photos with me oh yeah these photos that she shared with me Um, it was a little bit odd uh, because she shared these photos with me. Uh, these were supposed to be her children. Why this child was included like this, either she didn't understand that she had to crop out the photo, okay, But this is really her. This is really her. This must be a niece or something. That was really her. That was really her. Um, that I believe was really her, but none of these children were her own. Okay? These were children that belonged to someone else. This child that she said was one of hers that she adopted from Africa. Um, <clears throat> that child was found on another site somewhere. That, that was not her child. Why she put this thing here, I don't know. Okay, those were some photos from her. This child was not her child. This child, cute baby girl. See, she was looking up these. That's what she was looking up. These were not her children. February 14th. Um, let me go through this. Let's see. Jenna, 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 Jenna. I think then, let me get under her other email. She sent to me from like four different emails. Okay, let's see. Do, do, do.
Okay, so let's go to Okay, here's something she sent me. I called the television station like you suggested. So the news report came out because they got it way wrong. ABC, re okay, so she's talking about something about Watts now. Re-aired the Watts 2020 a few days ago on my local station. What is she talking? It's, it's lovely how they made the mistake. Am I wrong asking? They said Watts wants the case to stay open. I don't know what she's talking about there at all. Um... Oh, this is, oh, I forgot. Listen, I forgot a lot of this that she was saying. She said, Carolyn, I know I cannot call in every night, okay, because she started to call in every night. But could I call tonight? I feel bad for always wanting to call in, but this is a safe place that I can call into. Oh, and then somehow she had a seal. I am not joking. Said my first baby, Tyler, rest in peace. I miss you pushing in, pushing me into our pool. And she sent me this picture. I, I am not joking. Okay, now, let's see. Here she, could I call in on a different number, she said to me. Could I call in, please? Tommy and Keisha. Okay, she said, something that's always in the back of my mind is Keisha. That's the daughter she said was killed, okay? Let me move this. Oh, shoot. Come on. Move, move. Get out of here. Okay. Something that's always been in the back of my mind is Keisha. She was taken away too soon because of racism. She lost her life because we were one color. She was another. I'm terrified about losing another child. I constantly have replayed what I could have done differently to save her. The thought of it happening again is terrifying. I need to protect Tommy because Tommy is the little boy she said that in a Massachusetts public school that his kindergarten teacher called him the n-word. This is what she said on a phone call. And I have gone up to the governor, representatives, senators. I'll bring it to the press. I'll call out the hypocritical stance. In fact, I am 100% sure if I was a black woman and this was said to my son, the teacher would have been fired that day, no longer than that week. But I'm afraid something bad will happen to my baby boy. I need to keep going anyway. Tommy shouldn't be punished for other selfish actions. Me again, can I call in? Can I call in? It was every night. This this is in May of 2019. Now she sent me a photo and said, Sorry about that. I didn't realize I hit the wrong photos. Listen to this now. Those photos she sent me, listen to how she explains it. Sorry about that. I didn't realize I hit the wrong photos and sent a few pinned ones. The real life baby I sent on purpose because it's creepy to me 
And the dino rocker is just something new my kids love. I was so worried about not putting my kids that it isn't the safest idea to put them in the internet. I didn't look better at the ones that are safe to send. Also, I need to explain more. I'm sorry about that. I feel bad. Yesterday, some people were asking to see photos and I should have known better. Again, sorry. Okay, then she wanted to call in again, call in again. Carolyn, do you want to hear the update with my son in the school system? Carolyn, I was wondering if there's a stream tonight. I've got huge news. She was needy, needy, needy. Okay. Carolyn, I know most of chat are good people, she said, but I don't appreciate my son being part of the unkind people in chat. They went after my five-year-old. I said, I threatened media. Not that I had to use it. I know better than to share parts of my life. Also, whether you can understand how family comes in all sizes, in all ways, is that person's choice. But leave my kids out of it. I'm sorry that I have to put you in this, but calling me a liar is ridiculous and petty. People in the chat, I guess, were calling her a liar. As I said, this is some in chat. Most are good people. But as a mother, I hope you understood my issues with these statements. Can I please call in? This was about the verdict, uh, the um, Jones verdict. Would I be able to call in? She asked again. Please, in case I'm not able to make the stream. Can I call in about Amber as a mom who lost a child and how proud I am? Oh, then she was writing a book. Hold on a second. Hi, Carolyn. I'm hoping that writing my book about what I've been through could happen this year. As you know from my writing in chat, I have trouble with the written word, so I'll need a lot of help. Now listen to this. I remember you mentioned that you might know of people that could be my ghost writer and everything else. Any ideas or help would be most welcome and so grateful for, if you don't mind, could we have a conversation about what I want and see for this book? My biggest thing is how important positivity is to recovery and how pushing yourself to get further than you're told you'll achieve is beyond important. Please let me know your thoughts. And if you want my number, and she gives me her number, Thank you, Carolyn. I hope I'm not bugging you. I appreciate you being patient with me, Jenna. Sure, Jenna. I have nothing better to do. Um, let me call you and we'll talk about your book. Okay. Oh, now here she said, now listen to this one. My good friend drew this in February on the eighth anniversary of her passing. She was three at the time and she would be 11 today. We miss Keisha every day. She sent me this. Um, is that her friend drew it? I bet she's out there on Google somewhere. Okay, let's see. Carolyn, could I call in, please, June 16th? Then she sent me a picture of something. She said there was a toad in her toilet. She sent me this picture. Then she sent me a picture of her and her great-grandmother. Um okay then 
Oh, she told me, okay, she told me these are her kids. Hold on a minute. This is Carl, and who's 17, and Bethany, who's 8. Would you share this photo from D-Day? My hubby is in the Army. Okay, I guarantee you that is not her photo. Let's see. Carolyn, would you mind if I called in to answer questions and explain how this works? Please, Carolyn, thanks. Carolyn, this is 627. Could I call in and give updates about my health and the kiddos? Okay, then she said... I'm just wondering about calling in. I feel like you seem to not really like me all of a sudden. Yeah, because I wear my heart on my sleeve and my feelings on my sleeve. And we knew you were lying to us at this point, Jenna. Yeah, I really can't hide that. I'm not good at hiding that, okay? Not at all. So you're picking up on that. That's really, really good. You never answered my reply to your Dr. Phil book idea. Did I do something to offend you? Is it about my kids and not understanding how we adopted so many children or about my health? Or am I not your cup of tea? Let's see what she said. And she said, I've had a terrible, okay, sorry, I've had a horrible week, was asked in chat, you're talking about judgment live on the stream right now. I have more experience with that than most. Sorry, my lung and other body things shutting down isn't good content. I said when you brought up someone else calling in, oh, I'll wait. I think as many as possible should call in as well. No one has called in in a while. No worry. I give up. I did something wrong. Sorry. I have had a lot of different meds in the past five days, so I might be more emotional and overwhelmed, but I don't know. I feel shunned in a way. And I told her, I said, Jenna, it's nothing with you. We're doing something different tonight. I'm going to sign off and just want to talk direct before wrapping up. I will email after the show. Then I said, Jenna, I know you want to call in a lot, but I have to let others call in. And then I only want to take so many calls a night because several in the chat right? They feel ignored when I'm on calls all night. That is why I wanted to speak direct to the chat tonight. You are reading too much into this other than having to give everyone a turn to speak. I know you want to come on and talk about your kids, etc. However, there are others who have never called or called only once. And I gave the names of people that have done that who want to call in. When you call in, you stay on a long time, and there have been people saying that they feel there should be a time limit on, or that others should have a chance to call in. I'm sorry you're taking it personal and saying I do not like you or something to that effect, but it's not true. I just know you're a liar. Okay. Um... Then she sent back and said, trust is an issue with me. I've been burned too many times. So I do, think, do take things personal when I probably shouldn't. As I said, I enjoy hearing from new and different callers as I've emailed back, never mind, so so-and-so needs this time or could I go after them? At the end, I was being asked about email, calling in, and so on. I understood what you said, but was answering others' questions. I'm sorry for saying I'm freaking understand to you that I wasn't 
called for and was rude. I'm sorry for saying I freaking understand to you. That wasn't called for and was rude. I know people complain. They complain about everything. I, however, haven't told you in chat how to run your channel, and I'm not going to start. It upset me when you called my health and kids content. I hope you never understand how horrible my health is and how much pain and sickness I've been dealing with. I do hope one day you may adopt a child. They would have a wonderful home, but my kids aren't content. I'm sorry you and chat have issues with how long I stay on. I didn't want to annoy anyone. I'm sorry if you received email or whatever about people having issues with my call ends. Sorry that me being me is an issue with people. I have had five days I wish on no one. I might be more emotional because of meds I received in the ER, but anyway, I'll leave you alone about calling in and so on. Thanks, Jenna. I don't know where I called her and her kids. I don't know if you know what she's talking about. Oh, here's what, here's what she said. I said, okay, here's what I said. She had said to me, I'm just wondering about calling in. I feel like you really do not like me suddenly last month. You never answered my reply to your Dr. Phil book. Okay, I'm not your cup of tea. Then I said, no, Jenna, I have not been able to open my email. As I just said, I have emails from 13 days ago I still have to open. And if there are emails that I have to reply to a lot, and if there are if there are emails that I have to reply a lot, it's something I wait on. Too busy with end of year stuff with the calls. It is just that we need to vary the callers so everyone has a chance to share. People get upset if see, here's what she listen listen to what she took offense to. I said with the calls, it's just that we need to vary the callers so everyone has a chance to share. People get upset if we have the same content on calls all the time. Tonight we are ending shortly. Nothing against you. That offended her. She said that meant that I called her kids and her health issues content. Okay? That's what, that's what offended her. Then... People asked her to send in photos, send in pictures, send in video. Let me see what she put here. She put, let's see here. Call in, but I have to let others call in. Jenna's nothing. Trust is an issue. I did reread your email here. Okay, and I said, hi, Jenna. I did just reread. I've got to make this bigger. I can barely see this font. Hi, Jenna. I did just reread your email, and I have to say that the way I referred to the content of your call is in no way meant in the manner you took it. I am a writer, and we talk about content. When you are calling in to a talk show, that is content. What your call is about is very important since we have people listening. It is not just like you are calling me at home. So that is why I address the content of your call. It no way minimizes your health conditions or your family. Knowing all the people I have cried with, including yourself, regarding issues like poor health, you should know me better than to say such a thing. For the record, I have tried and looked very much into adoption. There are many roadblocks that people face, like myself, and it is not easy, especially from countries like China. I do resent that you are going in the chat and painting me as this terrible person who is shunning you when I addressed you in email. Doing that is reigning some issues for... Doing that is... That must be autocorrect. I don't know what I meant to say, but it's some issues for me. And I do not think that is cool. If you want to call in, I think talking about and doing a video tutorial showing how you access the military adoption site, as well as answering some common questions that are plaguing those trying to adopt, 
would be where I want the conversation to focus. If you want to do that, let me know. And then she said, hey, Carolyn, I was wondering if there's a stream tonight. You normally have started by now. Also, I hope that you can forgive me for what happened. I would appreciate if we could speak person to person privately when you have time. Yeah, okay. I'll get right on that. Okay, and then she sent me another picture. This is actually a video, I think. Let's see. Yeah, and, and these, this is her family, but it is not her children. And she was going like this. Oh, there's James with a baby. There's there's so and so. Oh, there's me with the baby. That's my baby. Oh, that's this one. Oh, that's James over there. Oh, there's James. That's one of the grandparents. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's one of my. Ch that's my daughter. That's her. Okay. That's what she was telling us. Okay. And this was a family video. Oh, there I am. I'm with the baby. Okay. Oh, that's that's me, and, and that's my other daughter. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, literally, this is what she did. Oh, yes, that's that's one of the other girls. That's one of the seventeen-year-olds. Oh, there I am with the baby. Hi, yes, that baby really looks like she is adopted uh, from whatever, what I forget the country that she said on that one. Okay, so yeah, she sent that to me, okay? Early 4th of July. <sighs> then, Carolyn, I'm so sorry that I upset you because only a few kids were in the video. Is there a way to show a photo or two? Then that part, after the Ramblers see my family, is there a way to cut that part out? You guys see the photos and then remove it from the stream? Yeah, okay, Jenna, yeah. Yeah, okay. I said, Jenna, there is no way to do that because it disables the live chat and holds the video up for a day for YouTube to make the edit. I will not do that because people want the live chat. That brought us to July and... Um, this is just crazy, and I think that's where it finally uh, broke down. Because there were multiple people writing to me and saying, this girl is lying, she's a liar, okay? We, we knew she was lying. We knew she was lying. But now there, there are pictures that she sent in. Let's see. Oh, yes, this forgot this one. Apparently, this was her after her accident. She titled that Broke. Oh, and she said uh, this was her prior, you know, when I forgot she was some kind of underwater person, and uh, this is a picture of her, apparently. And um, that seal was her first baby, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so that's some of the stuff that we have dealt with over the years here. 
and um, she made it like her hit for very yes uh, yes Barb she most certainly did and most certainly made race a huge huge issue I've been a nutter magnet yeah well there's a lot of people with mental health issues on YouTube if you haven't figured that out there are and like she said, she felt this was a safe place. And she felt once sometimes these people come in there and they get attention or they want it again and again and again. And she wanted to call in every single night. And people were getting tired of it because... You see, the ones you heard, she wasn't speaking as slowly as she normally speaks, okay? And I've got to find one more because after everybody was getting tired of her calling in, she was very calculated. She then told us this story because everybody was really fed up. Everybody was really fed up. They're like, she's calling in so much. Shit's become the Jenna show. It's crazy. What the heck is going on? She calls in every night. It's not even that she's talking about a case. It's ridiculous. She's talking about the same thing. And then she gets on there and she had us all crying, okay? Because she like switched gears on us and started talking about this accident and she had me crying, she had everybody crying, and we all felt so bad, right? Because we're like, oh my gosh, here's this woman. So she talks a little slow, but she had this horrific accident. And I have to find that one because then we like all changed and we're like, okay, we've got to be more patient with her. But then she didn't stop again. She wouldn't stop wanting to call in. And again, she would stay on or want to stay on the entire time. And then even when another caller called in, she would say she would be quiet, but she wouldn't get off. So we were trying to figure out what to do about it. But um, it was uh, absolutely crazy. Hi, Annie B. Yeah, this is just one of our many imposters. And hold on a second. Let me see something. So I know that was May 20th, and she was going on and 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 on. Probably get tell real fast by. I think she was coming on. Probably. Let's see. Now that time I'm on by myself. Okay. Hold on here. Let me see. Sharing.
colors there. Okay, so I kept it right there. And let's try this one. You see that this got um, So it was saying that um, to keep a prisoner on death row is. Well, that's Deborah Sizos. Let's see. Oh, you no. remember before he, we had, we were waiting for the verdict. We were waiting for the. You go to the furniture store like Ethan Allen. When I sleep. in the media for their unintentional perverted new doll. With just a flick of the wrist, the girls would see their skipper doll grow an inch taller on her stomach and develop. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we've got Jim Jones, live tech support brainstorming. Foxy bot, so I know that was not. Um, lived how he really did live. That was Brian's song. Men in the workplace, but. Yeah, I was by myself. What am I doing there? Oh, somebody was sending me pictures. Okay. It's got, I know it's got to be over here because there's only so much time. Somebody was sending me pictures of their. Okay, that was. That was show and tell, so we didn't have any callers that night. Okay. Just trying to find out where she really lost it. And we all lost it. I know it wasn't that, because I know. Let's see if it was this one. Extra coupons that she might have gotten. Oh, too, right? Because she all wishes passed. No, I didn't take any calls that night. Let me see. over here because I don't think it was any later than that. Is that what it is? Okay, here we have some callers here. Let's see who this is. money the government's costing the government 
but I, I've we're heard a, this able so did we're a good we cross all thought section. that too. <laughs> you know, we're a good cross section. If, if the people in mommy's chat say the guy's going to be found guilty. could never open it because it was too fast. I can think, well, maybe we can stop children from being abused before it happens and what could be ways. And I know that the things that I was suggesting are... Oh my goodness, that was someone. Okay, let's see. Um, So that's looking June 3rd. Let me check this. Oh, here she is. Okay, let me see. Let's just see if this is this is fair and that this could be her emotion. You guys have my back and I don't need to worry about Yeah, see I think this might be it. Yeah, I can tell. Okay, let me see here. Uh, let's see. There is a doggy again. Yeah, I think oh, there's and one more. Uh, there's thank you, Billy Boy Blue, for the super chats. I appreciate okay, them very, very much. By Jen, House of Memes. Yeah, absolutely. Believe me. And I really appreciate that. I wasn't expecting um, any. I, I know people care, but I wasn't expecting, and so then I felt bad for for feeling bad. Yeah, I, I, it gets that way. They can get to you. Just a few haters, and you can feel like it's all haters. You know. Yes, especially when they question the kids. It's mm -hmm. you know you go into overprotective mommy mode. Yeah, ignore the haters is the best for us. That's what they're saying. Yeah. I think somebody told me they calculated, and it's less than 1%, <laughs> are haters, you know, even when they're trolling or whatever. So you've got more positive than negative, way more. Yeah, and I definitely can see that. And also I thought about your situation with crazy. I, I don't know what to call that person. And oh. I, I really don't have anything to complain about when it comes to, I mean, you handle it extremely well mm -hmm. or have a way worse situation. Yeah. You have, you have to because there's always going to be people like that, you know, no matter where you go and anywhere. And sometimes people do it, you know, out of jealousy, sometimes people do it because they're upset about something in their lives, and it's just, it's coming from people, you know, that are just not right some, somehow, some way, and you maybe just think of it as like, you know, I, I pity you that you have to do that. Yeah, and, that's um, a good point. That see, Manager of Three Monster just said, pity the haters, they are so unhappy inside, and that's true, it really is. Yeah. It really is. Something's missing in their life. Something, and they don't want to admit it. So, you know, it's easy just to fling around insults and call people names. And this person is this, and this person is nasty. And this, because they've got all this inside. And instead of just, that's what I said, a lot of the haters, I think, they probably would be fun if you could get through to them, right? That they don't have to do this. But, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I think it's beyond our reach, which I don't like to think anything's beyond our reach, but 
at times, I, I don't know, I just, because of how different my family is, um, I defend it <laughs> or have to deal with situations a lot of the time that most people wouldn't imagine. And so it was weird to, it just, you just want what's best for your family and it's just hard to um, know if you're oversharing or you're undersharing or what, so. Yeah, it hurts, I mean, it hurts when there's, um, especially when it's somebody that you know, you know, that, that turns and, and turns some hate around. And I know this is, this is a crazy thing. When my son was going, when my third child, he had Hodgkin's lymphoma, okay? So he was a survivor of that. And there was this story, you know, it was when I was training some marketing executives. And this one guy that, I mean, he was so needy. And I, I trained him like crazy. I mean, but he was so needy. And I saw him through the death of his mother. I saw him through so many things. And I was always there for this person, right? And I'll never forget, he said to me one day something like, um, you know, something about not, not sharing, like, and it was like a two minute story I, I would share about my son. And he told me not to share it. Like, he just, it was just nasty. You know, don't share it anymore. What do you have to always say your son survived cancer for? What do you have to say that for? You know, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I was so taken back by it because I had never told, like, he was like, I don't want to, whiny, if you would, okay, about everything that was wrong. And I was always there. And when, as soon as I started training him on something and he joined our team, his mother died. And I was one of the first people he called. And I was there for him the whole way. And, you know, like, so it really hurt me, but you have to understand, I don't know, um, people are like that, and that, that's what I'm saying. It's worse when it's somebody that either you thought was your friend or that you gave a lot of time to and you tried to help them, and then they just turn around and turn on you. It's really sad. Yeah. Uh, so this person came, and then... Your son survives cancer. And yeah, and he told me to stop bringing it. You know, don't bring it up. You know, don't don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. Well, you've already talked about it. Come on, don't. And it was like it wasn't even that I was bringing it up in the same group. He didn't want to hear me telling anybody. And like I said, I didn't go on and on about it. I was like a two little second thing. But he goes, you don't have to keep bringing it up. You had a kid that survived cancer. Yeah, I don't know. It was just, and it was really, 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 but I, I understand, like, he was going through, he was probably, see what I mean, unhappy. He was going through some things in his life, and I was just the easiest person to attack. You know? Yeah, that still isn't, people just need to be positive about each other. Yeah, but they're not, they're saying, yeah, it's, um. I know. That's a dream world I, I live yeah, in. That's, where... it, that's, that kind of betrayal is the, is the worst for me. Um, my word, I, I'll share this because it doesn't involve anything, but I, as you know, I was run over by a diabetic. Well, I forgot and he was a diabetic. That's right. And he forgot his medication. And my friend, who I've known since I was four, came to me and would say, could you write me a check, but don't say anything to James or your parents or anybody. Now, mind you, I couldn't walk, talk, speak, anything when I left the hospital. I had to relearn all of it. And I had brain damage from it. So I was very easily manipulated. And when I finally 
said, no, I'm not giving you any more money. Mind you, it's about $50,000 later. I haven't heard from her since. And she got married, had kids, nothing for a father to tell me. But when that checkbook stopped, she was like, I know after a friendship since we were four years old. Yeah, that's an, unfortunately, that, that's another thing, right? As long as you're doing for them, you could help them out. Yeah. And yeah, that's, I mean, I've, I've learned over the years, and that's what I'm saying, like that those are the kind of things that really hurt. But then you'll have those friends that maybe you don't talk to all the time and, and they're there, you know what I mean? Like my childhood friend that I've known since I was five, when my mother died, I didn't expect her to show up at the wake, right? And she lived far away. So I called her, of course, but never expected her to come. And she didn't tell me. And she just walked in the door. And her and I can just get on a phone conversation. Now she lives, she's the one that lives in Arizona. But it doesn't matter. We could not have spoken for a year or two, and we can just pick right back up and talk. So, yeah, that's nice because, you know, I have, like, few friendships um, because I've always found a lot of people, they're fair-weather friends, right, or, you know, so. Well, thanks, Eva. There's, you know, another another friend of mine, you know, like, I can, I can count them on one hand, but that's how I've always been because so many people... You think they're your friend, and they turn around and stab you in the back, and then you go through that whole, um, you know, thing. So I'd rather have a few true uh, friends than just, you know, a whole entourage of people that turn on you, right? So, yeah, it's It's, it's hard. a quality over quantity. Yep, yep. And, and actually the same way. I um, rather have quality will be there forever than... But uh, it can be disheartened and, and especially, I don't know why. Um, I'm sure people have said stuff before, but I don't know. I think it was because it involved my son that I was so upset sure. about it. Yeah, yeah, your kids get to you, yeah. But, um, yeah, quality over quantity, absolutely. And I think I just, see, I'm, I'm not that type of a person. I'm not like that. I don't play games. I've said that before. I've never been a part of a mean girls club. I don't play games. If I tell you it looks good, it really does look good on you. Um, yes. It's not some kind of game that you've got to figure it out, you know, and I just don't do that. I just, I don't know how people do that. I just you know, play those games or, or like befriend somebody in order to get something, you know, like just have this, I've never been a schemer or anything like that. So it's hard for me because a lot of people have done things like that to me. So sometimes they just want to keep the circle, you know, close and not more guarded, I think, because of that. And then, because then when you do trust someone and they end up doing that, then it's like, oh my gosh, again. But yeah, you know, it's a, I don't know. It's a fine line, you know. Or girl, and I, I know, I am. Uh, Hi, Aussie. I need it. I, I know. I um, message you about it, and I, I was like, no, no, it, it wasn't you. Uh, but I understand about the whole getting. Uh, can't swear, so I have to think of a different word for it. I'm laughing at Jessica. Walk Jessica down. Rosenfeld Walk said, um, LOL, my friends know not to ask me certain questions if they don't want an honest answer. <laughs> Do I look fat in this? Um, Does this make my butt look big? Um, I, uh, after the, the Ramblers, definitely quality people. Yes, yes. And as I told you, I, it really is the atmosphere you set up for why I feel 
it's safe to talk about my children who, you know, most people here, you adopt children from the Middle East and they think you're bringing terrorists into the country. Yeah. And I've never had to worry about that here. Oh, thank you, Molly Lola's mom. Mommy, you have 18,000 friends and I'm proud to be one of them. I'm glad you're one of them, Molly. And thank you, Michelle. I think it's 18,500. Yes, sir. It's 18,164. Um, oh, I, I guess that, and plus the whole fight in for Tommy thing that just I've been dealing with with months and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things we deal when our kids get hurt. Yeah, it's um, I think that's yeah, you know, we go into you know, it's very emotional when that when they're hurt, like just like them that. So they say the mama bear, right? Because you can hurt me and it hurts, but if you hurt my kids, you know, it's something different. And I don't think it ever changes, even when they're even when they're older, you know, it's still. You still, you know, don't do that. Yeah. I was worried. married with starting a family when a diabetic ran me over. And I say it like that because the diabetic ran me over and then left the scene. Right. Um, and I, I, don't, I just somehow found the amusement in that. I don't know if I say it to make me feel better or what, but anyways. Um, my parents were, my dad travels to work and he was in Ohio. Mm -hmm. My mom was visiting a friend who was going through something and I was hit and they, they didn't know how bad it was. They heard I might have a broken leg, but oh. they stopped everything and ended up at that hospital and my mom came from Connecticut and got there in a few hours. My dad drove throughout the night because there was no plane right through and by the time and it was it happened January thirty first at six thirty. Mm -hmm. And I went into surgery to, at eight PM and it wasn't until six AM I got out of surgery which was my mom's birthday, where I died a bunch of times. Wow. And, but my parents and stopped everything. And I was afraid of, I've always been terrified of hospitals. And so my parents and James would take turns sleeping in the hospital, my hospital room with me because I was terrified and I couldn't really speak when I woke up from my coma. Mm -hmm. So that was scary. When you all of a sudden have no speech pattern or the ability to write not word salad and um, not able to walk and stuff. That's a terrifying thing to wake up to. And my parents, no matter my age, they were right there, as were my in laws. And I think that's why I'm, they taught me how to parent and they, I don't know, you never stop parenting. Oh, no, I guess no. That's what I'm trying to say, just in a, like a very round. Yeah. Never, 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 no. How old were you when you got hit? Carrie then wants to know. 22. 22. January 31st. I went for an early walk because I wanted to see the Houston Celtics game. 
I thought she said she went for a run. I told the, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but the EMTs asked if they could first ask if... Um, no, they didn't have kids. She was 22, just no, ready I to asked. start a family. I'm okay, but can I have a ride home? Mind you, I have compound fractions in my legs. My hips split open. I have a head wound. Mm. But I asked for a ride home. I was fine. I just needed a ride home. Hmm. And then, obviously, they didn't drive me home. But yeah. uh, they said, "Could uh, we? Can we cut off your clothes?" And I said, "Sure," but I didn't shave today. I had compound fractions in my leg, fractures in my leg. They, I'm sure that was their biggest concern. Hmm. Oh well, we can't do that. She didn't shave. I'm 38. Oh, I want to see. Oh, you're 50. Yeah. Um, Shay, see, we did just talk about her. They just said that, um, I just read something about that missing mother in, in Colorado, not Colorado, Connecticut. They said that the girlfriend and the estranged husband, the, girl, the husband and his estranged girlfriend, I think they're going to be charged with tampering of evidence. So it's sounding worse and worse. I mean, before they found blood in places, I sadly do not think she is alive any longer. That's One of the good things about this channel is we can discuss these cases and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people to talk. I, it was ta I remember it would be taboo to talk about certain things, but I think it's important and it, we don't learn unless we- There comes the Massachusetts important. I mean, we don't grow unless we learn and we don't learn unless we question. Right, yeah. Jamie says, I'm 61, and the only beings that have been loyal to me are my mom and my dogs. My mom is 93, and my last dog lie, died. I will not be anguished, though. Oh, Jamie. I know, Jamie, it can seem like that, right? So many people. I mean, and it, and it can make you very cynical to you know, make new friends and stuff, because especially if people have constantly, you know, done stuff like that. Yeah, I, I normally had a guard up just from, especially the views of me for my settlement. I didn't get a big settlement, mm -hmm. but I apparently became an ATM. And, yeah. you know, this money went towards my rehab of learning to walk again. It's not like I spent it on vacations. Right, yeah. It, the, unfortunately, especially now, um, with drugs and things, if someone can, you know, a lot of people are looking for someone they can get money from, and that's always scary when someone's always coming to you for money, right? Somebody okay. said something about, oh. Julie T, I am so sorry. What happened? That is her, she was hit, um, and her one month old baby girl is now in heaven. Oh, who is that, Julie T? Yep. Oh, sorry about that, Julie. Terrible. My three-year-old Keisha's watching out for her, I promise. Someone said the Connecticut, yeah, they, there's, th I think they're 13 and under the five in Connecticut. I think they're 13. She had them right away. So I think she was older. I think she's like 50. So and the oldest was only 13. So she had them like boom. And um, I think they're eight to 13. And yeah, they, if they're, yeah, it looks, I mean, it looks like there's foul play. It definitely looks like there's foul play and it looks like it's the father and now that's another one the girlfriend 
for it, that sounds like another kind of Frazee case, except this guy was married and Frazee was engaged. And, and But yeah, there's the girlfriend tampering with the evidence. That's crazy because she's going to help him when he's killing his wife, and that seems okay until she's the wife one day. And then you think, like, is he going to kill me? Because that went off, if, if they got away with it, because he gets another girlfriend? I, I never understood when you cheat with someone and they actually do kill them, get rid of, or Mm -hmm. like normal people divorce their spouse right and what do you, t do, like, do you if they get away with it do they it's ever just sit there and talk about it like you know they say something like if you get away with something like that i thought that it becomes easier so then it becomes another solution like almost in that um staircase thing with uh, peterson so now allegedly okay if he did do that to the woman in germany then was that Oh, well, I got away with it once, so I could do it again. Or like the other guy in North Carolina, that did we ever find out they he killed? Remember, we, she was missing, and then they he killed her, and then now they said he might have killed the first wife too. That happens a lot, where the first one is ruled accidental, and then they go on to do it again because they got away with it. So. What are these girlfriends or boyfriends, whatever, that are partaking in these things, thinking that if they get away with it, yeah, I could, yeah, well, I could do it the last time. Well, let's see. I got rid of, I'll just do it the same way. No one will ever see. It's like Robert Durst, right? He, oh boy. The, like Drew Peterson what? too, right, Molly Lola's, yeah. Drew Peterson, he's the one that. Yeah, he did. He did too. And then um, there's probably many more out there that that it's been ruled accidental. Maybe it's like a long time before, way before cameras and the DNA. That's like the guy in North Carolina, and just like what's his name with the staircase, Michael Peterson. Oh, they were able to solve a case from the 1800s. Um, due to DNA. What, what I just, case? But I mean, that. nobody's alive in Iraq, though. Would be brought... I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's not like someone's going to get arrested. Right. But, um, if they can do that, hopefully they can catch. I don't know. I'm just, I keep hoping that in the Patrick Frazee case, there's just something he screwed up on or his mom will just rat him out for her own safety because she doesn't seem like mommy of the year. Right. Because um, he needs he needs to be behind bars. Yeah, Candace says, why do these women even want these married men? He's just going to cheat on you too. You know, I think a lot of them like say, well, you know, he's not, he shouldn't have married because they probably say, you know, I shouldn't have married her and that's why I was never in love with her and that's why and all kinds of things like that. I was never in love with her, but we mm -hmm. had five I was. I had to get married to her. My parents were pushing for it or, you know. Okay, if I ever go missing, my husband's name is James. He will not be driving the Partridge family bus. No. You should really think about that, though. I, I will. It's hard to put car seats, though, into a school bus. Uh, you can do it. I'm sure do there's a way. Where there's buckles? a will, there's a way, Jenna. <sighs> well, they all play instruments. I might as well use them to. Right. Make yeah. Money I mean, you could them. if they do, then you could really start up a band. Um, Go on tour. <laughs> that would be nice. I always thought it like, do you see the tiny houses on wheels, and the people just take them all over? There's not a tiny house. 
big well, enough. I know, but I'm saying like maybe family. when all your kids are out of the nest, right, then maybe you and your husband would get a tiny house on wheels and you just drive mm -hmm. around. And then if you had kids that lived all over the country, you could drive around and just park your tiny house in their backyard. <laughs> right? How to make sure my family doesn't want me around anymore. <laughs> Mom's Hi, coming. Marcia. Mom and dad are coming with the tiny house. Well, my parents live with me. Oh, right. Yeah. And so do so my in-laws. Could the, couldn't they all get their own little tiny house and you guys could have a, a tiny house convoy? I don't know. My mom's claustrophobic. Oh. Hmm. I couldn't live in a tiny house all the time, but I think it might be nice if you were just traveling with your spouse and you know, for vacation and stuff. Was there a height limit? Because my husband's six four. I don't. I think you can build them in all different ways. You want a motorhome? Your husband, not so much, Sharon. <laughs> Big tiny house, yeah. I don't understand the people that sell their houses to go on the road in their motorhome. I can understand wanting to go and see and having a comfortable of your. But I don't think it's, sell your house. I think it's the whole minimalist thing, right? They're selling everything and they're just going to go and see the world. And it's it's something like it's experiences, not things or something. But I also understand that um, I don't understand those that who have like five kids and they want to downsize and they move into a tiny house. That just sounds like a tiny house that there's going to be another show like tiny house divorce. It's just crazy. I saw one couple, I think they had two kids and they had no doors or anything on any of the bedrooms. And they were, it's like, what about when the kid gets a little older, you know? And then there's these ones that the, the bed comes out in the kitchen. So you can't use the kitchen unless you put the mattress like under something. So what if one sleeps later than the other? Not only that, if you have teenagers and then elementary school kids you they, always they're want to on different treehouse, schedules huh, Jessica? I wonder if um tiny house divorce yeah I think there should I mean really I they, I think they have to revisit the tiny house I really want to revisit the big families that went and did it I'm sorry I, I just I don't think you, you can move in there with like, like five kids it's just got to be you got to be especially as they get older and they're teenagers fold up to bed into an ironing board yeah, but this was something weird they're cozy yeah if you live on your own amanda but oh my gosh or if you live in a warm climate where you can have a lot of outdoor living space but if you live where some it's cold you don't get to have a lot of outdoor living space that you can use. Here's my issue with outdoor living space. Oh, that a shipping means... container home, Jay May says. They built one around here at one summit award, but it, it's big. I mean, it's not just one shipping container. It's several, you know, it's a big house. How would you ever get heat or, or air conditioning to be able to run through? The shipping without... container? Yeah, the big oh, metal boxes. They do it, yeah, they, they do them. They're orange, they can get them in. We have one that was built up here, won all kinds of awards. Hey. Lily Bell says, hi, bloody freezing here in Melbourne. Really? Oh, it's winter there, right? Ugh. Not sure how my vegetables will stand being outside. Wait a minute, Lily Bell. You're growing vegetables, isn't it winter over there, though? I'm confused. But winter in Australia is like... It's not cold? She it says can blood, be cold. She says bloody freezing. I think that's bad. I think that's cold. Tasmania can get extremely cold. If you want really, really cold, go to... Um, Jaos is in Tasmania? I never knew that, Jaos. Uh, J-A-S. New Zealand. J-S. Uh, New Zealand is. 
Those are the ones I'm talking about, High 69, the ones with the wheels that you can go and you can go to all the places and then you have your place to stay. Starting to get hot there in Phoenix. It doesn't snow in Australia, does it? Molly Lolas wants to know. Tiny houses don't appeal to you. Maybe ah. because I've always lived in Texas. I need a lot of room. Me too, Sharon. I could never be a minimalist. minimalist. Oh, the minimalist. Yeah, I, like I don't know. I, 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 too I like many things stuff. call to me because I... I've cut down a lot about what I buy, and I try to only buy things that make me happy, but the minimalist would never pick up nine, nine of those washboards, even if they was going to make something with them, probably. Maybe if they were going to make something with them. I don't know, but yeah. Dad will not let them stay inside. I'm feeling the cold more due to the weight loss, but yes, it's the worst winter since my early teens. It's only 8 degrees Celsius today. That's, I think you can do the conversion. The 30 degrees. Is it 30? That's well, cold. It's not a really good defense, but 45 degrees. In the chat right now. Monkey Meredith, where are you from? On any parts of my body when he was in surgery, because I had just seen a documentary about that. And then nothing for a month and so, because I was unconscious. This is, looks, I know, a little weird for those of you, but this is um, M. Hank's mango, and it's doing well, M. Hank. I'm trying to say this is the root, and then, yeah, so I would keep it in the paper towel a little bit. You might see if some of this um, paper stuff, which is, will come off if you want, but um, probably now it might even be ready to plant. Um. and I grew to love him so much. Sadly, he passed away at the age of 17. We all miss him very much. That's all you wanted? <laughs> yeah, I didn't even see you ask. I was going through the now. Did you, were you asking me all, all along, Mommy Chickadee, and I didn't even notice? Oh, okay. It'll be in the next compilation. Yeah, I, I'll be making the videos of all the pictures, so don't worry if your your animal, your plant, or your child, or whatever didn't make it in the first one. I'm going to be continuing to make them with the pictures. We're getting plenty of pictures. There's no limit on the videos. All right. I uh, can't wait to see the trial tomorrow. Yeah, either it's me, either Teresa Fisher. And I'm hoping they go into closing arguments. Oh, yeah, I hope so. I don't think the rebuttal will take that long. If they just don't take so many breaks or something, you know, I don't know. We'll see. That judge is weird. Someone said he smokes, and they think that's why they take a lot of breaks. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Someone said that. We should have bets on how long. We should, Teresa. I think it's going to be fairly quick. I, I do. I think we'll have a verdict by Tuesday. I really do, if not before. I hope so, because that means Amber can Yeah. have peace. Mm -hmm. You'll never have real peace, but right. You know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, not have to worry about yeah that and so anyway, I think I'm gonna call it a night tonight because my son is getting. I have to get him off early. Like I said, he's going away for a few days. <laughs> I told him. I promise he'll be okay. Yeah, he's never gone away. So it's um, it's a. It's a school trip. trip. They're going to um, a YMC, like a wilderness camp. Uh, yeah, the oh, I can't think of the name of it. What they call it in Massachusetts? Um, um, nature's classroom. Something like that. When I when my daughter like it, the school has done it forever. Because when my daughter went, I was one of the chaperones, so I spent three days there, and so 
yeah they, they all go but anyway thank you sassy good night to you good night to everybody thank you to our mods thank you sharon thank you dylan thank you um um sorry sharon who's here dylan and there was someone else here sharon dylan i'm gonna say night guys before bye I'm Okay, well, well, that still wasn't her um, really emotional one, so we'll have to revisit that. It has to be after this, but that'll give us a guideline, and maybe we'll revisit it soon. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I really need to go out to Pennsylvania to pick stuff up, but I don't know how the weather's going to be. And that's really the only day I can do it. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I can chance it or not. I don't know what to say, but I'm going to go to, uh, I'm just going to go into my massage chair for a little bit and um, relax. It's been a crazy day. It has been a crazy day. Um, let me put, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm tired. Okay, good night, everybody. God bless. Prayers for all that need them. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. God willing. Thank you for the super chats, Billy Boy. That was very sweet of you. And uh, please keep uh, Nicole in your in your prayers. She's had a rough time with her dad being sick, and her dad in in your prayers. All right, all right. We'll see you. Good night. Um, you're off to attend to your 37 kids. Okay, Barb, is that all you have is 37? That's really disgraceful. You should have twice as many if you were really a good mother. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>